kick some ass. Let's get our fucking shit together and kick some fucking ass! Hey everybody, welcome to Kick It Ass with Jesse and Andy. Brought to you by American Barbell Club, ABC Strong. They're fucking awesome. Yeah, Check go grab out. some stuff. New shirts come in soon. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, we got some Honest yeah. stuff coming. Yeah, check out Honest, Honest.com. That's not, that's an unofficial <laughs> thing. So we not, have, it's kind of a real thing, kind of. We not. have stuff coming. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, brother, that like uh, that like is I'm not corresponding with. He like listens to the podcast all the time. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. I see him like commenting on like a lot of people's stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool, like seeing on it just commenting on wrestling. Yeah, exactly. Just like wrestler <laughs> stuff. It's like on it says like yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed right now, but I'm shooting today. Wait. I got my shooting pants on. Oh, I got my shooting shorts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your UFC shorts. I'm ready to fucking shoot. Yeah, yeah. I train UFC. You obviously train UFC. I got my American Top so, Team shorts on right uh, now. Camo fucking. I got the same camo basketball shorts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's funny because I put this American barbell barbell shirt on. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And it was the same color as the other shorts that I had, so I had to take it off. I oh, you're really like good top to bottom. Yeah. So then I put these on, uh-huh. and uh, but now yeah. you're an obvious shooter. Yep, I'm ready to shoot on someone. I'm gonna go on Oliver Street and just one, oh. one arm him. <laughs> Please shoot Please. on him. Shoot uh, on one of the Oliver Street Express. That just reminded me. Uh, real quick, remember to rate and subscribe us on iTunes too, guys. Uh, like a quick, like North Tonawanda story for you guys. Like as I was driving here, mm-hmm. uh, the, I don't know the main strip of street. Uh, when you get off, like get I got off at Colvin. Yep. Uh, I don't know. You make it a, get off a of Colvin, you make it right. I don't know that street there. Right, Wendy's is right there. Yeah, there's like a Wendy's, Kentucky Fried Chicken. You keep going. Johnny Puma used to live over there. Oh yeah, everybody knows <laughs> so, that. Um, but there was like there was like construction, and I like looked to my right, and they were like installing in the road, like deep into the road, this like huge piping that was like, I mean these pipes were like a mile long. Yeah. But like dudes that were like installing the pipes, were literally wearing like the ET. Like, remember at the end of E.T., the guys in, like, all white? Very I mean, cool. They're just, like, head to toe covered. That's because of all the magic shit in the, in And the I'm soil. just like, how the fuck are those guys wearing that? And I'm, like, five yards away from them, like, not wearing that. Yeah. Like, it's super weird. It's all it's because you didn't grow up here. <laughs> they're all outsiders. I think that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> They're the outsiders. <laughs> oh, I thought, you were, I thought you were just doing that because today's a nitro podcast. Well, it is a nitro podcast. <laughs> it was a, it was Wait, a perfect segue. You know, I'm still, I'm still fucked up because I'm not. I had surgery one week ago <laughs> yeah. from today. Yeah, and my my brain's still a little foggy. Uh huh. What were we talking about on the way here that I said I was going to talk about? Uh, ESW Albion. Oh, I wanted to talk about the ESW Albion show. Okay. We so like they all wrestled at in Albion, which is like straight up just like a like a straight up like horse horse and buggy. It was like a horse shelter or something. You, you said you what well we called? wrestled in a barn yeah. and you parked in a barn. I parked in a straight up barn. Yeah. And like it got to a point where a dude's like, "Did anyone here park in the barn?" It's <laughs> like Yep, I had to go move the car. It's about, it's about it's like an hour outside of Buffalo. That was like the first time I drove since shoulder surgery. It was, yeah. a, it was a one hour drive by <laughs> yes, myself. Yeah, it's probably not <laughs> the best idea. Yeah, but, but Gangrel wrestled. And well, then like I and like I told you too, like I I have I had to keep going outside to text you because I was just like, yo, I, yeah, my phone legit just says no service. Yeah, like Hanna, like, Hanna texts me and goes, I like. Obviously, it was like a three-hour show or you know two and a half hour show, yeah. or whatever it was. And ha- there was like a text message from Hana that was like, "Please tell me you're alive." Yeah, <laughs> like that was it. it was she's like four get, texts. It was just like, getting like green bubbles and like and she's like, <laughs> he just had so- shoulder surgery and he's driving a car. He probably fell asleep at the and, wheel. Like I took a like a painkiller yeah. <laughs> to go watch your friends wrestle. Yeah, worth yeah. it. Worth it. But uh, it was in like for me like re- wrestling shows like that like. You know, I saw the setup. I was like, this is a really cool setup because ESW brought all their production, like the curtains and the screen. And 
the ring and the lights and everything. And, it, you know, we're in no bones about it. We're in a barn. Yeah. And it was like, okay, this is either going to be like really like a really, it's a cool setup. It's like, this is either going to be really, really cool or there's going to be like 50 rednecks here and this is going to suck. And, yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, ah, eh, screw you. Like good guy, bad guy. I got to say this though, man. Like it's, it's funny. Like we, we get the opportunity to like go see other like local feds, I guess. Right. So yeah. we get to go in and, and like wrestle in Erie, Pennsylvania, Toronto, Sarnia, London, we did a Brooklyn show. You know what I mean? Yeah. ESW is great. Well, like I was just saying, so yeah, like they were, it, they filled it up with like just under 300 people yeah. in a bar. And I'm telling you, like, it's the, obviously, the like, first time they were ever in that town. If ever. you're listening to this and obviously you're not from Buffalo, Albion is like in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Like, and like, it's not like and we were like, that barn we wrestled in was like outside of town too. Like, town was in like the other direction. Yeah, yeah. So, like, to get, like, almost 300 people in, like, a, a little, like, barn, I mean, it, it would have been awesome. Yeah. Uh, had it, I mean, if, if, I can imagine, like, 400 people being in there or 500 people being in there would be, like, insane. Yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't doubt the, I wouldn't doubt it if ESW eventually gets there. Yeah, like, it's, for the, the first time there, just under 300 people, that's insane. Puff did a, a super kick. <laughs> Puff, Puff killed the crowd, man. Fuck Puff, him. <laughs> Puff and by a, killing the crowd, I mean, like, he, like, took them all away. Yeah. <laughs> like, sucked all their energy out. Like, Thurston wrestled Colin Delaney. In the opener, like, yeah. And it was awesome. Like, after the match, like, I told Thurston, I was like, that match was awesome. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it was one of those, like, it sounded really good. Yeah, neat. and then, I don't know what the second match was. Is that Puff? I think it was Puff, because that was the third match. Yeah. And, like... Puff threw a super kick, <laughs> and I almost threw my arm out of the sling yeah, and hurt my shoulder. I didn't, like, I'm saying hurt my shoulder. I didn't hurt my shoulder, but, like, I finally felt pain. Like, I went, whoa, and I, like, reacted yeah, like, to oh, it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I had And I was stitches. like, oh, shit, there it is. <laughs> yeah. um, things are put back together. And then Blackwood just gives my shoulder, a huge the squeeze. bad shoulder, just the claw, like the Von Erich claw. He does, yeah, he does that thing where, like, if something funny happens or, like, something cool, like, he'll just kind of grab your shoulder and squeeze it and, like, look at you yeah. like, oh, my God. And I think he, so he did that I to was, your bad shoulder. He thought I, I think he thought I was reacting as, like, oh, my God, that was crazy. But it was actually he had, like, a finger in one of the stitches. And I was like, <laughs> ah, like, it actually hurt. And then I kind of just no-sold it and, like, didn't tell him, like, know. he didn't know. I don't know how you can't feel it. It's just all tape. Like, it's just like you, you fucked up on yeah you but that's pretty funny then i don't think i told you did, uh did you meet the guy who who uh uh who ran the show in albion um he was like a younger guy yeah. I, I i brought him up during the speech at the beginning and yeah, stuff he was a nice guy. yeah like the like i mean it, it's it seen him like all day and then like as i was leaving it was just like like it was empty it was like just him and me and i was like hey man no thanks he's like yeah you guys come back next year and da 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 it's like, yeah, and I, I'm like walking away. He's like, yeah, I feel like I know you, man. I listen to the podcast. I was like, oh, cool. So cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, he so didn't cool. bring it up all day. And then at the end, I was like, oh, cool, man. Well, Thanks. it's cool that we're talking about it then. Because that I, I was like, yeah. obviously, I wish I could have wrestled on that. I was supposed to wrestle on that. And then it was a really good time. My shoulder surgery, obviously, I got in the way of it. But and Gangrel was there. It was awesome. Yeah, brother, like, Gangrel was great. And like, brother Dave was in the house. Yo, like, I, I said this, like, <laughs> uh, after, and then, like, Scotty O'Shea pointed it out like he vocalized it and i heard it was like gangrel comes to the back and he's like you know him and greg are like saying like oh good match blah blah, blah. and then gangrel starts complaining that he didn't do enough yeah legit was like wanted to stay out there and keep working yeah that is so fucking cool 49 yeah, but, years old and like ready to just go yeah and he did he did plenty match like was awesome. more than like, yeah. like power bomb or yeah. karanas and like <laughs> I, I know last week we put greg over big time as like but greg did like uh like the 10 count punch on the on the rope yeah but he did like one ha 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 <laughs> yeah. he did like the count with with shit with like shitty plastic so vampire teeth fucking <laughs> awesome yeah yeah Fucking someone to give that dude millions of dollars because his brain is just yeah. Gregory Arier knows what he's doing. He and, just is a perfect human. And honestly, if you're an independent wrestling promotion and you book Gangrel, like he's all he's always like that. He's yeah. always super cool to everybody. He's always super happy to be here and he always to be there and he always goes out and works hard. It's, yeah, he's the best. Yeah. So that was that. Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to talk about Alvin. I had a really <laughs> I'll, good time. I'll be. Yeah. 
<laughs> I actually had a really good time. <laughs> really enjoyed myself. I mean, I was, I've was i been in the house before that for three then, straight days. Yeah. So we house- that might have been the worst fucking wrestling show ever, but to me, <laughs> it was great. It was awesome. We got some sweet money taco afterwards, Oh, too. man. I was well, craving Andy, Andy ordered over $20 of money taco for himself. $21 <laughs> order from money taco. <laughs> like, man, he's out. He's driving. <laughs> He's letting his tits hang. Empanadas and fucking what? <laughs> Everything you can imagine. It was great. <laughs> so we're doing, uh, we're recapping. Yeah. So uh, we, WCW. And we said that we weren't going to keep, we're going to, like, we can't go in order because if we go in order, I mean. Yeah, we'll finish in 2025. Yeah. So what we did is we, th- we picked a random number and the random number was 97 for 97. Yeah. Monday Nitro. 1997 episode 97 yeah top to bottom and it starts with uh it starts with <laughs> i also no. noticed it was uh it was a tuesday episode yeah it was a tuesday episode so it was only two I'm hours because rem- right when they started doing three hour ones. oh was, so that's why it was only okay so they were doing three hours at that point but it was only two yeah did why why did they do Tuesday? I can't remember why they would I do. I think Tuesdays they were trying to see if it would work for Thunder. I thought it if... was something with like the channel because like back in the day, that's one of the reasons WWF left USA a while back because like every once in a while Raw wouldn't be on. Raw wasn't on because they did like a dog show. Cool. And then oh, the <laughs> Westminster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Yo, so Westminster like, that... right now. Just huge shout out to Hulu. <laughs> if you go on Hulu, you can watch the Westminster dog shows. <laughs> really. <laughs> Dude, they're awesome. <laughs> Got to be a dog well, person. I mean, if you're a huge wrestling fan, you hated it because like every once in a while you, there was just no raw. Because hey, if you're the a dog show, was on. if you're the Cordell Stewart of fucking dog show and <laughs> wrestling, you enjoy it. That's yeah. what I was. Just call me Slash. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like those guys, like the the American Kennel Club judge guys. <laughs> Are just high level perverts. Yeah. Oh yeah, like, they yeah. don't. They're just not. There's, there's, there's something forward. like yeah. there's I, okay. All of us here have owned dogs before. You, you, it it's weird if you touch your dog's like balls or vagina or asshole. Yeah, accidentally. Like if you're just petting it, those yeah, dudes, the wrong way. Those yeah. dudes just go straight up. Yep. Yeah, you're right. And they start touching that stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. weird, man. <laughs> like Bigelow the other day. I, this is one of my tweets the other day. My updates of. Uh, oh yeah. Of uh, my sur- surgery is like I've been in a recliner like I have to sleep in a recliner like sleeping in a bed just doesn't cut it like I'm real sore so I'm like laying in this, like, this recliner and like when I recline back it like <clears throat> creates this like bridge that goes from the recliner to the couch so now he realizes that he can like climb over and get on the couch easily yeah. so he'll be laying at my feet and then he'll get up. And usually he'll go over my left shoulder because he knows something wrong with my right shoulder. Yeah. This time he decided to just straddle my face. <laughs> and his little dog dick yeah, just, straight just went from my chin over my lip, over my nose, <laughs> in between my eyes, straight over my forehead. Just across your Just face. all over. And he, like, he desperately needs to get uh, groomed right now. He's, like, a little... He's, oh, yeah, he's a little getting a little, little nappy. Yeah. And his little dick's got, like, a little, like, little hair toenail on it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like his dick, he's got that little hair, he's got that little goatee on the tip, like hanging down. I know what you're talking about. And uh, that thing just, it like scratched me. Right from the chin, straight to the forehead. Nice. Oh, I was, just, I was just trying to think how we got to talking about that. It was from the dog show. Yeah, the dog show. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so it was Tuesday, the, two hours. They're in the Jacksonville Coliseum. Yeah, the Nitro Girls opened the show. I'm going to say this right now. I have definitely had multiple tug times thinking about <laughs> all of the Nitro yeah, Girls. Like, they, they're straight up just There was like a super, short-haired one super that hot. was super hot. Yeah. Like short blonde hair, and then there was like an Asian girl that came in, and she was like extremely. I think hot. I think everybody remembers that Asian one. Oh, she was so uh, hot, and then obviously Kimberly was. Kimberly and the t- uh, Tigress, I think, was and one. She was like the uh, the black girl. Yeah. yeah, and she ended up. She was with like the filth, the yeah. filthy animals for yeah. a while. Yeah, there was a lot of sweet Nitro girls. Oh man, uh, Shawn Michaels' his wife <laughs> was one of them. Really? Yeah, his his wife was a Nitro girl. I didn't know that. Yeah, Nash introduced them. I almost feel like that's cooler than being Shawn Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel you. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, if you're listening to this, fuck you, because we're now covering what I like to watch on Mondays. <laughs> Which was Monday Night Nitro. <laughs> told, told you to take the door of the window. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's just cover this. So Hogan comes out riffing the belt. Always cool. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, him coming out playing the air guitar belt was. Sweet. And I put this in here, but I'm waiting for it to happen. Bit, well, Bischoff came out first, and it was yeah. like, oh, yeah, that is just oh, he's a wet blanket. It's not cool. Um, but Hogan looked awesome. That's what I just put. Jesse is gonna say how awesome he looks. <laughs> yeah. I put it, and I was waiting for you to say it. I knew I he was going to say I it. I literally wrote down, he defines Jack and Dan. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was in my thing, but Jesse is going to say how awesome he looks. He looks I incredible. It. I knew it. Um, I put, Bischoff is off, awful. Then it cuts to the crowd to two black guys, two sweeting. <laughs> One dude is in an NWO shirt. The other dude is in the Sting shirt. And the dude in the Sting shirt is super apprehensive, the two sweetest friend <laughs> in the NWO shirt. Like, actual drama before any wrestling happens between these two dudes and like i said like the guy in the nwo shirt he tossed the two sweet up and then the guy like the other dude in the sting shirt kind of looks at it like do i do this right yeah, he might have realized the camera was on him or something and then he two sweets them because they're friends <laughs> it was pretty cool um the promo itself dude bischoff is just stroking him dude yeah it's like he's trying to be like real like cocky and arrogant I, like and it's... It, like it almost comes off as like I don't know. It just comes off weird. Like Bischoff, yeah. the way Bischoff talks about Hogan. Yeah. When I was a kid, I think I was, I definitely didn't like Bischoff when, I mean, when I was a young adult, I can't say kid, but um, I don't remember being like creeped out. Like I was, it's actually creepy. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. It's really strange. Yes. Um, and then they lay down. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I think the whole thing is supposed to be like, they're so over and they can do whatever they want. They're like, oh, we're just going to lay in the ring and, and talk. And yeah. it was like, man, this sucks. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, though, because of how <coughs> Hogan just rehashed all of his, like, all of his babyface stuff. He rehashed into heel stuff, but he just changed the name. So, like, instead of having Hulk and Hulk and he's got NWO whites. Yeah. Instead of saying brother, he says bra. Yeah, he says bra. And it kind of just he did it a lot of this drips out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, bra. Like, like it comes across like like real like unorganic. Like, yeah, kind of forced. Everything seems super unorganic. Like watching it back, uh, and then he calls Lex Luger Flexi Lexi, which I thought. Oh, was did awesome. he? I didn't catch that. My favorite. Really? It's like my favorite part of the 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 uh, the promo. That's a like, that's a great nickname for Luger. Yeah. Did you get any <laughs> any notes on that part? Yeah, I just want to get back to... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. This is Wes, the uh, NWO. <laughs> this is NWO. Yeah. NWO, he's the WC- NWO Wes. <laughs> he's the WCW uh, <coughs> official uh, historian. Oh, and, historian, yeah. And NWO expert. Uh-huh. I wish I was NWO West so then I could be like Bogus <laughs> West. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just want to get... Just, just take everything back to the dog show again. Oh yeah! And just shout out to my man K Dog and Dennis Rodman <laughs> yeah. for bringing the NWO together. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who, yeah. who said that? Oh yeah, the first thing Hogan he says, did. he puts over K Dog. That's the yeah. first thing he said, and he's like, "I just want to thank my man K Dog for joining up." Uh, and then he brings yeah. he brings it to Rodman. Yeah. Oh, and you talked about Rodman too, because like, yeah, they, okay, I, they, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think at this point, like Conan had just joined NWO, just because he was like, they, he was like, this is like. A week before this, he was in between Dungeon and Doom. He just kind of was like floating out there because he did that like thing where he was like squashing all the other Mexican wrestlers, okay. saying like he's the guy that brought them in, and then NWO grabbed them. And he kind of continued the storyline, yeah, just as an NWO guy. Well, that's we could segue there because then that's the first match. Yeah, it's K Dog versus Sabasa, and they and they two they two sweet K Dog as he's like yeah. coming down the aisle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Subasa <laughs> tried to find anything let's, about let's this talk guy about him. and got nothing. It was like, it looked like Ultimo Dragon if he was from space. Yeah. Like it, it was literally, it's spelled T-S-U-B-A-S-A. Yeah. <laughs> what, how did you say it? Subasa. Subasa. That's, okay. so that's how, uh, that's how Shivani, I think, said it. Okay. Um, he was. NWO, NWO Conan did look pretty sweet though. Yeah, and he like put it all together because I think like before that, I remember like he started wearing like he start, a couple weeks before this, not a couple weeks. It was like probably like a month before this. He started um, like wrestling in street clothes. Yeah, okay. but he like but it was like real weird. Like it looked like he was just grabbing stuff out of his closet. Yeah. So he would have like bright blue like shooters, shooter boots on yeah. with like 
red pants. <laughs> like, it just never made sense. Even in this match, though, he still had the, like, huge elbow braces with, like, yeah. white tape. He continued like, that. Yeah. For a long time. And yeah. then, uh, but in this one, he had, like, black shooters on, black pants on. Yeah. Like a black his, and white. With his underwear hanging out. Plaid. That was a big part. Yeah. It, he looked really good. Yeah, he looked cool. And then Sabasa just got squashed in one minute. It was, I mean, maybe less than a yeah. minute. I mean, it was, he had two moves on him. He didn't hit the rolling clothesline, did he? Yeah, because I thought he was going to go for the rolling clothesline, but he hooked him for that weird suplex. Yeah, yeah, which is awesome. And then just put him in the tequila sunrise, which is also awesome. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's really the only note I have of that <laughs> entire match. You got anything West? I didn't really write anything. No. Nope. And if then, anybody can help us out with whoever Subasa is, <laughs> yeah. we'd appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> Google it. Because I, I, I said this yeah. before, I, I, when we were we were eating uh, icicles, ice, icy pops, um, uh, before the podcast started, I thought it would have been like Kazayashi because Kazayashi comes in. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't Kazayashi. No. <laughs> um, and usually I'm pretty up on like Japanese wrestlers. When it comes to stuff like that. Yeah, like, like who it is and yeah. what they eventually became. I've seen them before, like, you yeah. know, known if they did something else or whatever, but yeah, I was so lost on this one. I got I got a question on the next one. Okay. Um, so the next match is uh, William, Lord William Regal yeah. against Ultimo Dragon. Yeah. Why did they keep calling him Ultimate Dragon? That's well, what he was when he yeah, started. He had to it be was? Ult- in, in WCW, he had to be Ultimate Dragon. Oh, Ultimo. okay. But yeah, like my, my I've... I must really love Ultimo Dragon because my as soon as I put put U L T in my phone, yeah, you put Ultimo. it like put the line over the U and oh. put Ultimo. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, I I put yeah Regal versus Ultimo. Uh, I was really stoked. Yes, you know, obviously, you know, this match is going to be cool. Like something cool is going to happen during the match. Yeah. Um. But instead, the first note I put is I hate Zabisco. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like the very first note I have for yeah. this match because he just is the worst. Um, and then the, the the note I have after that is just big sunset power bomb. Yeah, like, from the top. Yeah, Regal takes it. Awesome. Yeah. And like I said before, man, like that I this era of like Regal is just money. No matter yeah. who they put him in there with, yeah. he's just awesome. Yeah. He. Uh, I caught it too. The announcer said. That Regal next month was going over with like a group of people. He was gonna he was gonna work in the G one tournament for yeah. New Japan, which I that's so fucking cool. To I'd think. love like, to watch that. I mean? It's like imagine if like a guy from Monday Night Raw in two thousand eighteen was gonna do the G one tournament. Yeah, like, that's fucking that's well, super cool. Right now we kind of got something like that. Cash Zono is going to do that progress yeah. tournament. Yeah, I think which that's is so cool. Exactly, like, stuff like that is fucking. It's, it's, Chris uh, Hero, it's really awesome. Bro. Yeah, aka Chris Hero. Um, it's that, that stuff like that's really cool. The strike exchange in the middle, where like he's doing. What he was doing, like forearms, and Ultimo Drago was doing that spin mid kick. Yeah, was awesome. Yeah, because they were both selling like they were getting destroyed. Yeah, but then popping up and smashing each other. Yeah, I thought that was awesome. Yeah, the whole um, the match was fucking really good. Yeah, it was. I mean, the fast it was quick. They only had like six minutes, but like, yeah, but they that, did everything. You and know? it was, and then like he. Uh, Dragon hooks the dragon sleeper like pretty much like out of nowhere. Yeah. And then taps Regal out and the crowd was crazy. Yeah. And he's like, and the he new, won the he's title. The new dra- he has the new yeah. title. He's great. the new dragon. <laughs> he's the new dragon title. Yeah. yeah, wins the title. It was fucking sweet. Yeah, it was awesome. Any notes, Fess? No, I just, I couldn't get over the heat that he, that dragon had. Yeah. I mean, it was crazy. Like, yeah. he did it like a. Well, you got to remember, too, that's right around the time he, like, went babyface, too. So, okay. like, that guy was having, like, outstanding matches as a heel. Right. And then he, he shit-canned uh, Sonny Ono. Sonny Ono, yep. And then, you know, now he's like that. I think, like, that was that was the U.S. Ch- title, right? It wasn't yeah. the... So, like, that was the first time he won the U.S. title. He That's, like, actually establishing him not as a, a cruiserweight anymore, right. too, which is pretty rad. Yeah, but, yeah, the, they kind of came out and just did, you know, not slow stuff, but just came out tied up a bit did a little yeah. stuff and then he did the uh that flurry yeah he did the flurry that alistair black steals yeah <laughs> <laughs> no and then the, like the crowd just blew up and, yeah like, from then on out it was they were just yeah hot. i remember that he hit that yeah that kick 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 and then yep. the backspin kick yep. regal bumped the crowd yeah. Went nuts. yeah they went yeah. nuts and they they stayed up for the rest of that match sometimes people just love the smaller guy beating up the bigger guy mm-hmm. you know the, the dirty rotten scoundrel yeah Steve regal. i love yeah. that did, I didn't see it on his tights anywhere. It, was, it didn't say that. It must, it must have been on like his jacket or something. Oh, it was real I tiny? It was really small. Like oh, okay. Yeah, because he had the red singlet thing I love the singlet, too. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. The crimson red singlet. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Uh, uh, so, they like, okay, they used, like, 
Mean Gene did a lot of like live oh, interviews. Like, basically, well, basically, it's like instead of doing like backstage interviews like Raw does or segments, like they just use Mean Gene in the aisle way. Like, four remember times. I said that there's like a point in time when like every Nitro starts with a limo segment. Segment. Yeah, we're like about to get into that thing because, okay. like, in a, in a couple ep- episodes. It's just going to be, like, limo segments, like, over and over again. <laughs> They're probably just like, man, we got too much Mean Gene. What can we do? Oh, limo segment. All right, cool. But now, okay, so it's it's Mean Gene. He brings out Ric Flair. Which looks great. His, well, his suit. His was, outfit is fucking it, awesome. Yeah. But, like, I didn't, so I didn't understand. I mean, Flair says right away the four horsemen are him, Arn, Mongo, well, and uh, Benoit. Mon- or Arn. Arn was hurt? No, Arn retired. Oh, okay. Right before that. So, okay, because then they were saying, like, he was announcing a new member. Well, okay, so like, huh? we left out on, what, 71 was the Something last like one that, we yeah. did, right? Yep. 71. Like, 72 or 73 is they do, like, like uh, the episode starts, and it's just got a picture of Arn, almost like he's dying. Yeah. And then they go into, like... The, like a retirement, like and I th- wasn't know. that the episode that when Nash came out dressed like him and six was Flair? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very cool. It was pretty Very cool. cool. Um, so but, yeah, he's basically taking like the Oli ring. Okay, from that time on. So and then so Flair's like trying to announce. He's supposed to be announcing a new member. Yeah, of the Four Horsemen. Yep. But someone else, someone foils yeah, his plans. Yes, he does. <laughs> um, I can't believe like this. I put this like the, when Flair says Mongo. It just makes yeah. me fucking sick. I think everybody. I think I, I think that's everybody. I, it makes me fucking sick to see them. Oh. <clears throat> so, yeah, he says Mongo. Uh, makes me sick. They're going to introduce the Horsemen, and a very cool looking six pack walks out yeah, with with jean shorts. <laughs> uh, and I just put here, I need tapered jean shorts. Yeah, six is just straight up shooting, saying they yeah. ran out of money. That's why he came back to wrestling. Oh yeah. Like yeah. that, and then like Flair just like plays it off like he's like pissed off. He like turns and like starts walking. He's like, you know, I'm I'm out of here. And then just sucker punches him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's the best punch, dude. Like yeah. the best sucker punch it's ever. Been, it's great. And I was thinking like when Six came out, it was like I was thinking the same thing with Hogan too. Like everybody's really into like Macho Man. They're all really into like the the like bandana and sunglasses look. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, yeah. Six just comes out rock of the shades and yeah. bandana. And... But like didn't look at his lower half. Yeah. Like, his upper half looked awesome, and then he's wearing tapered a, jean shorts. And a, and a t-shirt. And, like, boots yeah. that, with, like, socks out of them coming out of them. And, a, and an NWO t-shirt. Just a, ba- a baggy t-shirt. I think that's all. Bring that look back. <laughs> uh, then Benoit comes out. Benoit obviously looks cool. He's just wearing a white shirt with a huge gold ro- uh, watch. I, I wrote down that Benoit looks like, literally looks like he's going to a wedding. <laughs> like, he's wearing, yeah, like, black sure. slacks and, like, a baggy white dress shirt <laughs> yeah very cool yeah uh and then doug doug dillinger's <laughs> back he's looming around you just see doug dillinger just oh around. yeah yeah he did come out when they started fighting right yeah yeah any more notes on that no i didn't have much about, about what he it. said i was just more excited about the uh, wcw saturday night oh yeah, <laughs> no, they yeah. 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 <laughs> and then once that comes back the nitro tugs come back out yes they do <laughs> And <laughs> Nitro Tugs. <laughs> Nitro Tugs come back out. They're, they're Nitro Tugs yeah, time. And they were, they were dressed like like late 90s teen movie yeah. chicks were, like kind of oh. baggy clothes. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like sort of grunge stuff. Very cool. Yeah, I'm sure that popped Andy. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> I lived in that, that era. That was my uh-huh. era. Uh-huh. And then the fucking man comes out. Yeah. The fucking Muda comes out. And they play like... I like when it uh, in uh, sanity does it right now, where like each member has like their own like character to the theme song. The theme song's still the same. Yeah. So it like starts out with like bam 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 bam, like yeah. like weird like chimey. Uh uh-huh, Japanese. Yeah, like ja- Japanese. like 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 bells, uh-huh. and then it goes into dan dan It's N W O Muda. Yeah, so cool. Comes out and that entrance outfit is probably the best entrance. It's outfit. So cool. He had a, he had a, like a big like. Metal Snake. dragon on his shoulder. It's so fucking cool, man. Yeah, huge like, helmet. Just looks awesome. Yeah. This match is, I'm, I'm what, a minute and a half? Not even. It's him, right? versus the, it's him versus the giant. And can you imagine, like, going there, being Muda, and you're putting face paint on. He taped his hands up heavily. Yeah. Wrists are taped up it's heavily. And the NWO across the face. Got to put all that stuff on. And then, like, one and a half minutes, you're going out there. Legit. Buddy. Put the screen shit in your mouth. 
Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I, oh no, they didn't even give him, they gave him like the generic WCW music. It wasn't, it wasn't like the usual, like, like Japanese, like when, uh, like Tenzan or, yeah. or Chono and Muda, they all was had it, like their was own. It just like, the NWO music? No, it was like some just basic bullshit, like WCW music. Cause then when, uh, Giant comes out, it's that like, oh, fuck, I, I had it in my head. I could have probably like hummed what it was. <laughs> but like him and Luger both had the same music because they were like tagging at the same, at the mm-hmm. time. Um, but you can tell it's definitely like, voice like not voiceover but you could tell it's like it's not the original it's not the music that they were supposed to do yeah which is kind of weird because you'd think that wwe would own all that stuff all their you know what i'm saying like yeah i can understand like you watch ecw on the network but yeah they all came out to actual yeah you know copyrighted music but I, all that wcw stuff would have had been original i would think yeah yeah either way i was into it so, yeah it's cool <laughs> yeah it's very cool muda goes out it's awesome like you know Giant comes out in in and Muda's already in the ring. He takes all of his gear off. Muda, uh, Giant walks out and he's just over. Yeah, I mean every time he just put his hand in the air, like yeah. he did like the claw mark. Like the pro- place would just go insane. Yep. So he gets in the ring and Muda's just like holding onto the rope, just staring at him. <laughs> yeah. And then when they go back to him, he like points at his throat and gets like the green mist. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like ready. I was into it. Yeah, and then like they go in. He throws a spin. He just whiffs the kick that just misses. Paul White's like nose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like and you uh, couldn't get a piece of paper between the, yeah. and the, kick. Like, the thing is, I remember like originally watching this match a couple months ago when I was like going through that tear. Muda was big. Yeah. Muda's not like that far off from the giant. Like, I mean, he's obviously like everyone's big, like, smaller than the giant, but like he's not as like small as you think. Yeah. Like the older he got, like, he just got like yeah big and thick. It's wild, yeah. like just how like even tall. Like he had to have been like six four. No, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, and then these are the notes I had. Um, Muda's the coolest, <laughs> great bald spot. <laughs> they go for the uh, they go for the choke slam, and then he just blasts him with green mist. Yeah, into his teeth. His teeth <laughs> yeah. had gr- his were just green. Yeah, he was covered. Yeah, he, it was uh, awesome. I was impressed. I mean, like, because I was wondering like what stage Muda was at, like. He hit him with like two drop kicks before yeah. that, and like still got up on his drop kicks and everything. Yeah, they were great drop kicks. You think that was? I mean, ninety seven. Like, I'm sure his knees were hurting at this point, but dude, bearded, bearded NWO Muda is my favorite. Like, yeah. that's like ninety nine, two thousand yeah. era is my favorite, and that's when he was having those matches with like all like he was having those crazy matches with like like Chono and Chono like went or what i don't know who defected first but he was having matches with like chono he was having all those matches with uh tenru and they were like going hard yeah and you gotta think that dude did a moonsault every day of his life yeah for about 30 years uh-huh. his knees are just dust yeah it's just smashing i don't know if you guys saw it if you guys want to follow something cool there's like great muda fans at great muda fans on instagram and muda just got uh knee replacements two knee replacements yeah so hopefully he'll be back because he just and he just did a moonsault not too long ago, didn't he? He said he did his last moonsault. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. But then the giant gets jumped by all. Well, well, let's just say my, like Macho Man and Vince. The, yeah. <laughs> the weirdest, get, like the, the weirdest the, combo the, ever. Yeah. And I hate saying this, but the B team. <laughs> like even though Macho Man was there, it was still got a B team. Even uh, like I mean, we'll get to it later, but like Vince is like really busy in this episode. He comes He's out a lot. Busy, just never wrestles. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the Macho then, Man and uh, Vince come out and jump the giant. They, yeah, they basically jump the giant. hooks the choke slam. Muda missed some. Macho Man and Vince run in. Fuck finish. Yep. They start beating up the giant. Um, out, out comes Flexi Lexi. Yeah, Flexi Lexi <laughs> gets in the ring. Um, Luger or uh, he gets grabbed by like choke slam. Oh and He's yeah. in the air like nothing. He's just holding him like a child. Yep. He's yeah. like a six five, probably like two seventy, fucking Lex Luger. Yeah, and he's just holding him in the air like it's like nothing. Uh huh. Um, and I put, I wish that there were spikes there, and he dropped him into the spikes. <laughs> <laughs> like Mortal Kombat. Yes. Yeah. Would be fucking awesome. I did kind of like. I did kind of like that angle. The house supposed to be like 
Giant was was blinded with the mist, and he grabbed Luger and then picked him up for the choke slam. But like Luger, like in his ear, was, was like, "No, game, man, it's me, it's bud. me. yeah." It's so he, me, bud. It's Flexi Lexi. Flex. Yeah, so he puts it. It's Flexi. So he puts a yeah. yeah, put him down real slow. I kind of like. And then that. like a guy comes in and like hands Lex Luger like a like a dirty dish towel, you know? <laughs> yeah. and they rub it in his eyes, and he's okay now. Yeah. Yep. So up next we have. Unless you guys have other notes. I got. I mean, I had some trivia about that. But oh, please. Oh, what do you got? Winner gets a freezy pop. <laughs> <laughs> if neither of you guys get it right, I'll eat it myself. <laughs> All right, so Muda first appeared for NWA WCW on March 18th, 1989. Uh-huh. He was introduced as the son of the great Kabuki. Yes. By his manager. Gary Hart. Fuck, I don't even have to finish the question. <laughs> Andy's on it. Moon is my all time favorite. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's one kiss go for yeah. Andy. You gotta, you gotta yes. keep track. You gotta freeze your I'll go put right. this time. And we can skip the next match if you want. I don't uh, want to. I mean, I gotta talk about Malenko. Oh, yeah, he's man. cool, but. So I'm like, Malenko's in it. Like, I put this up, but it's... like, Malenko is up next. And the, my first note is I just love how dry he is. Like, the driest of the yeah. dry. Did you <laughs> like... make that note? No, why? I mean, He's I've always so thought that about him, like no facial expression. I'm talking about like... his body though. Everyone was oh. wet at this point. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. Everybody came out just wet. Yeah. He was just dry as a dry as a bone. Yeah, yeah. dry hair, dry. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His, his um, body was, but he was actually dry emotionally. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why he was called the that's Ice what Man. That's I thought you were talking. Yeah, yeah. The Ice Man, uh, and then like Mongo comes out and just starts sputting some shit off about <sighs> knocking him silly. Oh, yeah. He's like, hey, nine and man of a thousand holds. You won't remember one hold after I knock him silly. It's just, it was like your little glasses and your <laughs> shot varsity jacket. Super long ponytail. Ugh, man. Weird body. Awful. So then he gets in the ring. There's some stuff that happens. I Like, uh, Malenko, like, literally, like, Malenko has, like, the classic, like, if I had to wrestle Tyler Body at wrestling practice this yeah. was the match i would have like yeah okay put me in a headlock give me a tackle i'll sell for yeah. it's just like yeah just leading him around you know what i mean yeah <laughs> a very, a very dry match yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um and uh what did i put here i put uh like oh, hang do on. You, i would love to talk to dean malenko and be like yo when you saw your name next to his like were you like oh great i have to wrestle mongo tonight <laughs> i mean he probably just figured i'm not taking any tough bumps yeah, right. That one fucking I have it down here. Yeah, where, he took like, that weird tombstone. Yeah, he like, oh, came in because yeah, he was throwing a tombstone. A, that was a finish, wasn't it? He was throwing a Hooked tombstone a at the time. Oh yeah, the tombstone was a finish. Right? Finish with a, a tombstone, and he never would get. He'd always almost fall. Really? Every time he would like yeah. get the person up, and he would trip and fall. Literally, Malenko was like off to the side, and he like hooked one leg, and, was just a and then just, and just or, went a, for a it. Bicep, yeah, a body slam. Uh, I I did write down during this match on commentary. Zabisco said. Women are like elephants because they were talking about Deborah. Yeah, because like his angle. So yeah. Zabisco yeah. says women are like elephants, interesting to look at, but you don't want to own one. And like there, after he said it, there was just like a second of silence. Of course. And like Shivani was just like, "All right, Larry Zabisco, everybody." And he was just like, "It was like it He's was such an super idiot, strange." Man. He's the worst. And I mean, that's ninety ninety seven standards. It's like nothing was that touchy then. No, yeah. it wasn't. When standard. it goes to like now, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. I can't imagine like Shivani or uh, who was the other was it Mike Tanay at that time? Yeah, like them feeling any less different about that. Yeah, I bet you those guys were just like, yeah, yeah, you're cool, dude. <laughs> like in their head. But Shivani had like the the know how to like kind of play that off, like, dude, what the fuck, man? Yeah, you know like, what I mean. What like, are we supposed to say about that, man? Yeah, um, uh, he, he did. Malenko did when they got into some stuff towards the finish. Malenko gave him like a sweet German, like right on his head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Russ awesome. just got into it. And uh, then Jeff, I, Jeff Jarrett came out dude, in white pants. I have awesome. so much no, notes just about what Jarrett wore. <laughs> so like, uh, I, like Jarrett's outfit is amazing. He's wearing two toned boots. Like one <laughs> side is black, one side is white. Um, oh yeah, remember the small package? It was so in that awesome. match. Oh, it's man. the worst small package I ever saw. That's the ending. That's the finish. Yeah, it was a small package. It was like, and I hate it too because it was like, Malenko was gonna win, but it's like they're not gonna have him tap Mongo out with the clover leaf because like Mongo has to look strong. It's like, come on, man. so dumb. Dude. Sucks. Like, <laughs> give me a break. Yeah. So he's wearing all white and black. 
He looks awesome. Yeah, real like, awesome. Jarrett looks awesome. White pants. Goes out, and I kind of like... Feathery blonde hair. <laughs> I like his, like, chicken shit kind of, like... It was amazing. Like, he didn't mean to do it, but he did mean to do it. And then the whole time they're, like, talking, that segment after... Yeah. They're, like, talking. He kind of plays it off, like, he didn't need Malenko's help the first time, or whatever happened, or Eddie's help. Yeah. He just, like, I'm the, I'm the U.S. champion. He just kind of, like, plays it off. Yeah. Like, and it's he's, like, so su- cool. like, super southern, like, chicken shit. Yeah. Here. Like, all so right, cool. I got this. <laughs> but, like, then Deborah talks. That that one segment. Like, Dean Malenko's stuff is rough here. Yeah. Like, his talk well, is, like, so real like, bad. after the match, it's, like, uh, what is it? Yeah, Jarrett came out, and then fucking Mean Gene comes out again, and it's Mean Gene, Deborah, Jeff Jarrett. Malenko. Yeah, Malenko, like, right after his match. Yeah. Like, Mongo came walking by, and, like, security, like, escorted him away. <laughs> yeah, get and him then, out of uh, here. Yeah, and then Deborah, was that it then? Uh, yeah, that was it. And yeah. then it was, like, he, like, asks, like, for help or, you know, basically, like, watch my back, I'll watch your back. And Malenko's, yeah. like, I'll think about it, basically. And it was, just, it was just, like, so, like, I think I wrote it down here. Yeah, I put just rambling because, yeah. like, at one point, you could tell, like, Malenko finally talks, which he, like, wasn't much of a talker. Yeah. And then, like, Jarrett cut him off and, like, started rambling more, and then Deborah started talking. Actually, what he said there was actually kind of cool, because he was, like, talking about how he was the champion, and he yeah. just was, like, undermining, like, Malenko. Like, yeah. the fact that he beat just beat Malenko for that title. Yeah. And, like, just played it off like he was this big champion that won this huge match. Even though Eddie, like, came in and interjected in the match, he yeah. played it off like he won. Yeah, but he, the person he beat is right there, like, sitting right next to him. And he's asking him for help. And then it was weird. And then, like, Malen- kind of cool. Malenko basically said. I'll he, think about it. Yeah, he was like, like, I'm, I go on my, like, I'm on my own. But then he says right away, that he's like, but everybody needs someone to watch their back. And then, yeah, he just ends it with, like. I'll let you know when he walked away. Yeah. It's real weird. But then Deborah starts talking it and it, like when she talks There's like no closing line. It's she like just kinda, yeah. and then she just kinda stops. And yeah. Like, oh man. And she is just bad. And it like she doesn't talk loud enough. No. She doesn't talk slow enough. That super southern Oof. accent. Which it's is, rough. Do you have anything there? Rough. Yeah. Not, um, not yeah, cool. the, the I mean I didn't really have anything about the match, but there's a dude <laughs> front row. And he's got this handlebar mustache, <laughs> stonewashed jeans. He's got like Pat Swayze roadhouse hair, yeah. and he's just got a, he has a homemade sleeveless black T-shirt that he took like a glitter pen <laughs> or like some sort of like sparkly ink and wrote New World Odor on it. Awesome. <laughs> and he's just shaking the guardrail the whole time. That's like, cool. You could tell he just doesn't like the match. Like he's, he's just cool. like. You know, get somebody else out here. Yeah. But yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> and they, they're like, hey, we need to get someone out there. Who do they call? Hector fucking Guerrero. Oh, fuck, dude. dude. Hector yeah. Guerrero comes in, and I just put Y, question mark. And then brother versus brother. And then Hector's Eddie, trunk. Eddie, yeah, Eddie Guerrero versus Hector Guerrero. Yeah. And they don't give, I mean, unless they, the network was different. They didn't give Eddie Guerrero an entrance. Like, no. they come back from commercial. It's like, oh, here's Hector Guerrero. Eddie yeah. Guerrero's already in the ring. Uh, Hector Guerrero's tights were like black and like bedazzled with yes. like gems. Awesome. <laughs> and they just, cool. they literally just go, it's like he gets in the ring and they just go Boom, straight into the Lucha. Like, <laughs> uh, and the ref is in the way the entire time. Oh, yeah. He's, the he, entire yeah, match. Lucha's the rest just of throwing him through a loop. Uh, the cutoff was a bite. <laughs> yeah. A, <laughs> a, couple, like, a couple of them. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was like a bite. Uh, and then, like, the move of the match. Please tell me all three of you guys thought the same thing. When Hector like hits the ropes and then turns and does that weird twist yeah. in the air, <laughs> you like went yeah. like I, I was I trying it. to I was trying to think how to explain it on here. It's like he basically went for like the Kevin Owens or like Chris Hero like back senton, yeah, yep. but then like turned and like kind of like belly splashed. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> yo, when I'm when I'm healthy and we're wrestling, <laughs> yeah. and I just bust it out, yeah. and you're gonna I want to make sure I can't wait to see your face laughing. <laughs> I'm into it. Yes, I'm into it a hundred percent. It's so terrible. Um, Sweet. And the match, he does that other thing. I, yeah, too, I wrote right? down Hector with some of the weirdest offense. Yeah. <laughs> like he, in a couple of them. It looked like he was going to go for the IC well, moonsault. Yeah, when he went for like that weird dive. Yeah. And it was like, he does basically like, basically he does like an up and over. Yeah. Just to the, to outside. the outside. So like essentially like, you'll, you'll notice this part, if you don't know anything about wrestling, like with the terms that we're using, like when a guy is going into the, like, chasing a guy into the buckle, and the guy goes up in the buckle and goes up over the guy, and the guy goes into the buckle. Yeah. 
He I, does that to the outside. I couldn't get yeah, from the apron though. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't even like. I couldn't even figure out how to explain it. I like, kind of liked this. it. <laughs> I mean, Yo, I, Kevin. Like when I say he, you had, know how you do that that spinny thing like that. You do like the Vader, the, the Sinton. You should do that to the outside on top of these. <laughs> yeah, legit. It's cool. Just on the apron, spring off the second, hit it, man. Yeah, yeah that would be cool. Like, That'd be when I awesome. say like Hector had weird offense, like I was real into it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like, everything his, he did, his movements are like that of a fifty-year-old man. Because he was, it was like kind of like he was old. Yeah, but it, but like Eddie was like such a good base for oh, everything. Yeah. Like it looked legit. Yeah, like, yeah, it was awesome. And then Eddie throws the stiffest power bomb ever yep. on his older brother, and then hits him with just the, the most textbook frog splash. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, dude, the <laughs> stiffest. I was like, pop, like. The stiffest power bomb. Okay, because because then Malenko ran in. Yeah, I wrote down the Malenko power bombs the fuck out of Eddie too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah, and like God, like fucking Ed, like, you know, like I'm a big mark for power. Like when I was a kid, I was such a big mark for power bombs, and I'm always like, man, I'm gonna start throwing power bombs. Everyone like ninety percent of people just don't get up and they're lazy as fuck. Like Eddie, when Malenko picks him up, Eddie's like. Poof. Like, so yeah. fucking smooth. Triple H is really good at it, too. Yeah, yeah. He gets right up there. It's just like, man, nobody does that. Yeah. Like, Guerrero's just so good. It's like, yeah. and then, then fucking <laughs> Malenko just lays his ass and out. And then puts Eddie in a, a clover leaf. And then Hector, mind you, like, Eddie was, like, biting him in the match. Like, all this stuff. And he's like, yeah. let him go. Yeah. Let him go, brother. <laughs> brother, let him go, brother. And yeah. he's saying, let him go, brother. And then just sucker punches I guess he didn't sucker punch, but he punches Malenko, and then Malenko just attacks him and puts him in the clover league. <laughs> yeah. And then Eddie just leaves. Yep. It was melee. <laughs> exactly. yeah, like, um, I wrote down, like, Eddie rules, because he's, he's, dude, fucking he's awesome. so fucking sweet in that match. Yeah, that match was great. Yeah, it was uh, really cool. Then just aggressive metal music plays. The Nitro Tugs come back out again. Yeah. But this time... With pyro, yeah, with pyro, <laughs> it was like all low lit and weird and red. Like yeah. this is our third nitro tug, so yeah, it's kicking off our two. Yeah, and then it just pans to the crowd, and there's a guy that looks like Eddie Deason, which I hope someone at home knows who Eddie Deason is. Eddie Deason was like the nerd actor from the '80s, oh. <laughs> like holding a sign that just says "Raw is weak." <laughs> <laughs> the <great word. laughs> uh, and I think this is like the halfway point. Um, yeah, because yeah, I remember thinking that that it was. I was like, oh, Eddie and Hector were like the main event of the first hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. So think of this. I, I I think this is kind of sick. This is a note that I could because the next thing is like another segment with yeah, with mean, uh, mean Gene with me and Gene. Uh, mean Gene's busy. Having a commissioner come out in a suit is so rad. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like at that time, that was um, that was JJ Dillon's J. J. like Dillon. he was like the commissioner. Yeah, and he comes out in a suit and just look. It looks formal as hell. Yeah, like I love that. See, when I was a kid, like I didn't I didn't understand JJ Dillon. Yeah, you know, like I mean, I didn't know he was like. I mean, he was in the original Four Horsemen, wasn't yeah. he? Like he was a manager. Yeah. yeah. So like, I don't know. As like to me, I, I just thought he was like a normal guy, like yeah. kind of like Jack Tunney in the WWF or something. Of like, no, he was like a different because he was a worker too. Yeah, he was, he was like a wrestler. And yeah. Then, like yeah. So yeah, he it's like JJ and Mean Gene, right? Yeah. And what? That, yeah, shit. I honestly, like, I, I went to the bathroom while this was going on, and then so, I came back and it was like Stevie was out there. Yeah. So I just put this by having a commissioner look like a commissioner is awesome. Yeah. Stevie Richards comes out, he interrupts. Um and then I put uh Jesse stole R- Richards look. Yeah, with, the, with the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he's wearing like a half shirt. Yeah. Um and it basically says says that he's got like a deal. He like came up with a deal for uh for Raven. And then It was like, supposed to be that Stevie came up with a deal? Yeah. Okay. He like yeah. was the guy that like kind of like handled the deal for him yeah and they're like like, actually he's over here follow me follow me no guys follow me yeah and like ravens to the crowd wearing a sick dinosaur jr yeah it looks awesome um jack leather jacket fucking he looks so handsome around the waist what do you got there yeah, he wrote the exact same thing. I wrote sick dinosaur. wearing a sick dinosaur. Junior yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was big on like the dinosaur junior shirt. He ministry. had like a Sandman shirt. He wore. Yeah, he had a Sandman, ministry one. A ministry yeah. one. Fuck. Uh, he had a couple other ones. He always. He had like he had some like real go tos. Yeah. Um. And then yeah, like Ravens like pissed at the thing at the this thing, and then. He like attacks Stevie Richards, and he basically like, he never came over the rail. He no, just like punched stays him. on the other side. Yeah. He's a fan. Yeah, <laughs> Dillinger, Doug Dillinger was there. He made sure that you know it was okay. Things was didn't fun. get out of control. And then like they get like he punched. It like ended really weird. Like yeah. he punched Stevie, 
Like, they gave Stevie the microphone. He was just like, ow. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then, like, J.J. Dillon was like, I don't know anything about this. And he put his hands up and walked away. <laughs> yeah. What's the note? Come on. I know you got the snow. <laughs> I don't know. If I you didn't have a note there? <coughs> mean Gene trips and almost falls. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? He, yeah, yeah, he did. He, did. he, he did. like, stumbled going put, up to Stevie Richards. He put, he put it on the mic, too. He was like, yeah. whoa, I got yeah, a microphone. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I have about that segment. It was horrible. It was, yeah, yeah it was bad. Was like, like at the beginning of the show, um, Shivani says, like, teases that WCW has this huge signing. Yeah. And that was supposed to be it, but that they never let it's, anybody yeah. say anything about it. Oh, like that was supposed to be Like, the it was supposed signing. to, like, like, J.J. Dillon was supposed to come out and talk to <laughs> yeah. Gene Oakland and be like, you know, here it is. Like, the big this is signing. The guy. And then Stevie Richards just comes out and kind of muffs it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> so it just never, nothing ever happened. And like I said, like, Mean Gene probably it easily slipped his mind because he had to do about six of these interviews yes. that night. So. And every time he would, would like, do the closing segment to, like, take it to commercial or whatever, yeah. he would always say, it's Monday and we're live. Yeah. <laughs> Anything could happen here. Yeah, I mean, it was Tuesday, but. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, so, wasn't, he didn't ever said, like, it's a special Tuesday, yeah. day, like, we're live. He yeah. always would say, we're, it's Monday and we're live. It's great. So yeah. then. Uh, oh, your boy. Well, no. Then we have uh, it. Just cuts to the crowd, and there's a sign that just says Luger Straight Edge. Really? It was like like Lex, like Straight Edge Lex Luger, yeah, and it said like XXX. Um, and then we have Lex Luger. God, trash Norton. Hey, hey, hey guys! Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Is that, Puff is, that is that you, Puff, Puff Marshall? Marshall? What's up? Yo, it's me, Puff Marshall. I'm coming to you live. From the greatest restaurant in all of Charleston, West Virginia, it's Pies and Pipe. Wow. It's like hundreds of different types of pizza and hundreds of different kind of beers. And I'm very drunk and very full. <laughs> I spent all my winnings. Let me tell you something. What do you mean I, winnings? I won a lot of money at the casino. <laughs> Marty Brock Casino down here in Charleston. Uh, there's a bunch of Greyhound races. And I won. And I won because I bet all the money on every dog. <laughs> so I had to win it's but the a... only problem is uh, I spent all the money you guys gave me for this segment and I'm stuck in Charleston so I need you guys to wire me like a couple thousand dollars or I'm gonna have to start turning tricks or something <laughs> It sounds like you're having a you're having a you're having a great time there in uh, Charleston, West Virginia. We'll be there next week for Nitro. Uh, <laughs> you guys might have to give me a plane ticket or something when you come down here because. I'm stuck. <laughs> well, we'll talk to management and uh, see what we can do for you there, Puff Marshall. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Right, good, good, good. Th- th- thanks for the call. Yeah, no problem. I'll see you guys next week because I'll still be here. <laughs> Sounds good. Later, Puff. Puff Marshall, 1 800 collect. Yeah, 1 800 on road. 1 800 collect on the road. There it is. Puff Marshall. <laughs> so before that, uh, yeah, we had the Luger straight edge sign, yeah. which was insane. <laughs> Puff. Man. <laughs> Uh, and then we have Luger versus Norton. Norton looks fucking awesome. Dude, I, I wrote down, like, he might be my new favorite wrestler. He's fucking awesome. Dude, those, those, like, sunglasses he wears. Yeah. And his, like, wet mullet and, like, vest. He's gigantic. Yeah. Like, he's... Then, like, Bagwell, like, him and Bagwell, like, Vicious and Delicious. Yeah, we're awesome. Amazing. Like, Bagwell is, like, almost more entertaining on the outside than they were in the in the ring. Yeah. He and, like. Loves talking to the camera. When, no, that, I think that was, like, his gimmick was just. To make sure that there was constantly chatter going on, like, yeah, with the with the it was, with, really, it was awesome. It was really smart, and I've said this before, but Scott Flash Norton is like the coolest nickname. I like, Dude, I love my favorite. That he's called Flash. Yeah, it's like a, a gigantic arm wrestling dude. His yeah. nickname is Flash, uh, and those sunglasses are just the best. Little trivia for you guys on WCW versus uh, NWO. <coughs> what was Scott Flash Norton's finisher? It was. It was. It, the, he'd pick you up for a power bomb, but it was like a shoulder breaker. Yes. Oh yeah! <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Betting a thousand today. <laughs> We're killing it on the trivia. I thought that was gonna go to THQ, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about THQ. Man. <laughs> he was awesome. That was just Brakowski. <laughs> yeah. My Inca boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. THQ. Man. I'm gonna play that when I get home. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's, so it's Scott Flash Norton versus Lex Luger. And then Luger, his comeback, he throws the weakest. I know I complain about this dude that a lot but his his clotheslines uh, like are what not how not to throw clotheslines it's, it's a known thing in wrestling that like people will call him like luger clotheslines like they're oh not my yeah, god like, dude yeah it's not the but best. in fairness he has a bionic arm 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot. There's a metal liner. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, yeah, so he eventually hits the flying forearm and... They're Norton putting over bumps. the fact that, like, he's going to be able to get Norton up and then just gets Vince up. Yeah, like, he... <laughs> it was same thing. It was, like, Luger got rocking and rolling and then, like, Vince just ran in. Luger kicks him, puts him up in the rack. They, they ring the bell, DQ. Did he rack Buff, too? I don't know. I don't remember. No, he just kind of cleaned house. Yeah. And that, oh, and then he talked, right? And then I think uh, that Luger yeah, he did gets, a promo. He, like, cuts a horrible promo and gets cut off by of Hogan. Of course. Yeah, 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 I put terrible Hogan Luger promo. Like, yep. that was, it was And here, cool. like, so we get brother, brother. Yeah, brah. Brah. Yeah. And then he goes, brudda. Yeah. Brother. <laughs> like, like Jimmy yeah. Super. Yes. Yeah. Jimmy Butterfly. Jimmy Butterfly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here, my weak moment of the podcast. Can you open that for me? Yeah. I'll make sure don't blow up. Yeah. Yeah. Did anybody catch uh, Mark Curtis's ring the bell symbol? Yo. He oh, jumped fuck. about eight feet in the air. Oh, where really? is it? And his have... hands went about a thousand miles an hour like this. Both of them. I do have. Like he was shooting a gun. Fuck. What? When Vince like ran in for the finish? Yeah. As soon, oh, yeah. Shit. As soon as like they came in. Yeah. And like Luger started like cleaning house, yeah. ringing bell for the DQ. Like, dude, he jumped like ten feet in the air and just <laughs> Spe- was like. Speaking of THQ, man, I love that they like put that in the video game too. Like, yeah. He would always pop up in the corner. Why wouldn't you? I put him. I do have a Mark Curtis. Um. A note in here somewhere. I think maybe it's like the the main event. He's cool. Yeah, he's the <laughs> he's fucking really best. Cool. He's the best fucking. He's the best. Yes. I mean, so to this point, Vincent is the most over man on, on this Nitro. So, like, yeah, I mean, he's just getting tons of face time. Nitro is full of Mean Gene Okerlund and Vince. Like they're they're out like every segment. Yep. Uh, next is the best match on the fucking card. If you Fuck ask me. yes, dude. Are you kidding me? Well, we skipped a few things. Did we? Okay. Oh, yeah, we did. Yes. <laughs> really? We skipped Colin, Colin Nash showing up. And <laughs> Nash, oh. up. Nash is sh- His short His dick ass is just out. Plaid. Really? He had plaid yeah, right shorts. Right Nash is out. Short. <laughs> dude, his gimmick bag was hanging lower than his shorts. <laughs> <laughs> they were like red plaid. I just plaid. put Nash's output outfit. It's just his plaid shorts. I can't believe his... I didn't pick up dude, on that. His leg. Yeah, they show this suck. I have, yeah, they, I, I saw this thing. They, they show up in the back i yeah. have skinny legs but like he has the skinniest yeah. legs. oh yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and like they're just sticking out of these high plaid shorts <laughs> was with a fanny pack amazing. hanging lower than like, the shorts dude, the shorts were horrible oh like, <laughs> terrible and then and then like lee marshall hat back out his hats on on backwards yep He's so fucking cool. Bag. He's Who's, so cool. They show because they yeah, Hall and Nash walk in together. Doesn't yep. someone like talk to them or something? Yeah, somebody six comes pop. up to him. Oh like yeah, six. Because okay, he's trying yeah. to get him to like. Remember yeah. that that promo in the beginning? He goes like, "You wouldn't say that if Nash and Hall were here." Oh yeah, right, when they were beating right. him up. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, so now are we at the tag match? Lee Marshall shows up. Yeah. yeah. First call. He already did. <laughs> yeah. One eight hundred. Puff Marshall yep. shows up. Uh, mm-hmm. You got it's Psychosis and Laparka versus Wrath and Mortis. Fuck man, and it fucking rules with James Vandenberg. <laughs> oh, J- and yeah. Sonny Ono. And Sonny Ono. Sonny, yeah. Sonny. I think we talked about this before, but Sonny Ono. First thing he does when like, like on their entrance, like as soon as he comes through the curtain, he takes well, a selfie the, yeah. of himself with a disposable camera because yeah. <laughs> it's supposed yeah. to be like the Japanese tourist. Yeah, thing. yeah. So yeah. It's fucking great. Fucking very awesome. racist. Very racist. And very cool. Oh, look at Daniel Bryan's chest real quick. <laughs> like just straight. Hamburger meat. meat. Sorry, we have like uh, we have SmackDown on, and like they're showing like a segment with Daniel Bryan, and his chest just looks like meat. Yeah, you got to remember at this point, he just got done doing the that rumble for like over an hour. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. And he looks exactly like that's what just happened. Me, that is rough. Dude. <laughs> okay, so right back. This obviously, I think every time we do a nitro, I I can't not put these dudes over. I talk about Wrath probably more than I talk about my dog <laughs> at this point. Um. I, like, I liked him as Adam Bomb, but he wasn't, I mean, it wasn't like this. Wrath nah, is just different. awesome, man. Yeah. He's just so fucking awesome. And then Mortis is just great. <laughs> I put best tag team. And then Psychosis and <laughs> LaParka come out. And, like, the second best tag team comes yeah, out. Exactly. Like, it's so fucking good, man. Like, right off the bat, LaParka's just doing his, like, yeah. wobbly legs dance. I put, this is my match. <laughs> and then they just cut to that segment of Flair talking to Perfect, and Flair's wearing, like, a 4XL blue shirt. Yeah. <laughs> God, I, like, it, like, has, like, his wrestling gear on, his fingers yeah. taped, and he's just wearing, like, like, said, like a 4X yeah. t-shirt. Hiding it up. <laughs> um, and then I just, my first note is I love that, they kind of go into a spot. La Parka gets up on, um, you know, they're like basically shining the baby faces, and like La Parka like shines up on, on, uh, on Wrath, and Wrath yeah. is just selling for him. That's awesome. 
And he's like way bigger than everybody. And he's yeah. like taking bumps and selling for uh, La Parca. It's great. La Parca, but, La Parca eats a back elbow in the corner and somehow does like a corkscrew bump out of it. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just amazing. Course, so. Yeah. Then he goes over, gets the tag on Mortis, and I put this over a lot in wrestling because I'm gonna start. I want to start doing it. Mm-hmm. Mortis comes in, does one, two boots, yeah. and then goes to the ropes and oh, the punch, punch to the yeah. face. I think he did it twice in that match, yeah. actually. It's and weird. then he goes to the next rope, he does it three kicks, Okay, one punch. Nice. And it's just awesome. He, um, and then, bo- yeah, Psychosis botches. Yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. <laughs> Psychosis hits a little bot. Like, it was like some, bo- some of botches. Uh, like, like someone shot him to the corner. He tried running up the ropes, and he just he literally just crashed and burned to the outside of the yeah. ring. <laughs> they covered it very well, though. It was like, kind of awesome. Yeah, they because like what Mortis just follows him out and pushes him <laughs> back in. Yeah, then he hits a sick fucking suicide. Dive. Is that yeah. when they go right into the dives? Then yep. they work into a dive. Yeah, <clears> they both like La Parka hits a crazy dive, and then they uh, and then they did something where like I think it was Psychosis went for like a. A baseball slide like after the dives but like wrath like catches them and then like benched them and yeah. dropped them on the floor yep. it was, it was just i don't sweet. know why i put this but a huge miss by mortis um he missed something i don't know i know at the end of that sequence he he caught um psychosis and did the like standing in the middle of the ropes but on the second rope superplex in oh yeah oh, which would yeah. look pretty cool looked awesome from yeah the apron. dude canyon um, man yeah. canyon's like anyone that wants to watch like Innovative, innovative wrestling stuff, yeah just innovative, watch yeah, innovative offense just yeah. watch canyon or mortis is yeah. just he's the fucking man yeah i don't have anything for him missing um yeah i just put a big miss huge mm. miss so me i don't know what happened the match is just fu- it's fucking great yeah, it's great. um uh the finish they do that like double they finish they, i put this i said hell yes they do my old tag team from backyarding finish <laughs> the lynch <laughs> we called it the lynch the lynch because you hang a man up. What? Yeah, one dude picks him up for the power bomb. Now at forty, very racist. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. So yeah, backyarding was also when I was like eighteen. So, uh, wasn't thinking too hard at that point in time. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that match was fucking awesome. Like I said, I I keep putting over that fucking that uh, bicycle kick that. Wrath. I, yeah, anyone so, I talk so basically to. they win. Laparka comes in with a wooden chair and Smashes hits, and hits Mortis on the back with it. Yep. It yeah. breaks everywhere, and then Wrath just pump kicks the shit. Yeah, but he starts him. dancing. He gets a good dance. He in. gets a good dance in, and then gets pump yeah, pump kick from it. Yeah. yeah, and just pump, pump kicks him like out of the fucking ring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So La Parka cool. took like a sweet bump out of the ring. And I don't too. remember seeing pump kicks. Like no, I, that's I before they were of, like a normal thing. I can't think of pump kicks before that. Yeah, I'm sure like someone in Japan was probably doing them. Well, because Wrath had like such long legs, so. it just was awesome. Hell He's of a so pub cool. kick. And up next we have Bagwell versus Booker, dude. Which mm-hmm. is what a match, dude. Book, I, Booker T is fucking awesome. Like yeah. he's really good. He, I put, like, I put Bagwell's awesome. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> like Bagwell like literally they're in the ring like circling, getting ready to wrestle, and Bagwell just walks over to the yeah, camera, just, starts like, talking to it. Uh, and then I put like Booker comes out with a hat on. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, a New York it's just a New York. <laughs> like super weird. Like because it doesn't like you know he's got like the Harlem Heat like red and like white and then he's just got this blue like vintage like New yeah. York hat on. <laughs> and they were in Jacksonville, so it's mm-hmm. not like it was a hometown thing or something. Maybe no. it's Harlem Heat, dude. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, Harlem Heat. But, but they were booked from Chicago. He gets slapped in the face. Oh yeah, you're they right. They were built from Chicago. I was wondering about that too. Yeah, but they were Harlem Heat. Yeah, that's very strange. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, this is the point when he I gets put him a slap to the face. Yeah, that's how the match starts. It's like uh, yeah, a slap to the face, and then book just it, he was really big on that like no sell, like buff like yeah. They do like a double a reverse hip toss. Book just takes the bump, no sells it, spin a Rooney, and then just like kicks I, the shit out. Of I him. put that like the that first sequence like gir- oh, that was like a great fun first yeah. sequence yeah. where it's just like there's like a there's like two drop downs. There's two leapfrogs to it. He does the spinneroony like out to the fucking leg lariat, yep. um, and then and then Bagwell gets up at well, some point in time. He gets up in that like thing and he starts he starts jawing to Nick Patrick, and then it comes back where Nick, Nick Patrick's like shoves him. Oh down yeah, and then yells at him. He just melts into the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I did put he, he this one here. I put Pat Tanaka spot fresh for eighty seven. In 97. Uh, flying Forum? Yep. And yeah. you're doing it 
in 2018. <laughs> but Booger's there like puts is. mine to shame. He it was looks like, so cool. It was fucking awesome. He just dives through him. Yeah, it's crazy. Every, even like the beginning, he hits a tackle and he like ta- he like smash through him. The, that right there. The, the the that first tackle is just awesome. Yep. Yeah. It's just ferocious. It's like and I mean, Big was pumping his ass off. So at this, it's like I don't know. Like me watching it, it's like. Booker T's wrestling at this point is on like a completely different level from everybody else on the show. For like, sure, he's just so intense and yeah. so good. It's like holy fuck, man. yeah, really good. And I, I watched I I watched last night. I didn't want to watch it last night because I knew I would like fall asleep. But I I started the first episode of 1998 last night. Uh huh. And Booker wrestles someone, and he started doing the Harlem Hangover oh, no. regularly as his finish. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. And it was the match was awesome, dude. Yeah. Sometimes he would finish with a missile dropkick off the top, too. Yeah, yeah. Very <laughs> which, is, cool. which is nice. Uh, yeah. This is when I put Vince is busy because who I think, yeah, I think Scott Norton was out there, too. Yeah. It was all three of them. Yeah. It's great. Scott Norton looked great there, too. Because he came Never... back out with the sunglasses and the vest. Oh, again. he does get involved in it. He, like, bumps. Uh, they do that spot where, like. Oh, he's like, Booker, Booker. Yeah. <laughs> he close bam, him. Close yeah. him on, the, on the apron. Yeah, on the apron. Yeah. It was, dude, fucking match rules. I mean, Bagwell was, like, the perfect chicken shit heel yeah. for a dude. For like an intense baby face. Yeah, it was yeah. awesome. Hell yeah. Uh, no, we got Gene again. Yep, <laughs> me and Gene's out there with Ray Mysterio on crutches. Talking to Ray. <laughs> Ray. Ray's not much of a talker at this point. No, nope. uh, but he's talking, Gene's talking to him like he doesn't <coughs> know English and he's not from America. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, this guy's from Mexico, he wears a mask, I don't know if he knows English. <laughs> That's a good point. N- no note to be like, hey, the kid's from San Diego. It's okay, yeah. you can talk to him. You know, yeah. he he went to like school in, in the United States of America. He gets it, man. Because uh, Gene is just like, here I am with Ray Mysterio, Ray. <laughs> it's great. Well, he's like talking yeah. to him like Sue. You like, hurt you know. your leg, which is right below your hip and thigh. Yeah. Will like you be able to come it. back from that? Yeah. It's super. It's yeah. so really, really like deliberate and late and like it's just weird I, honestly i didn't pick up yeah. on that it was all. insane like ray had to be like then, under that mask like just fuck and then it out, he man. just starts talking like ray starts talking and you gotta tell like gene kind of like in the, the rest of the interview he's just kind of like oh he like knew he had to like eat his words on that one <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that um weird. and then i love that like conan comes out and obviously like bullies him he's like it's, it's supposed to be conan like, that like broke his leg right yeah, yeah. something yeah. like that um okay, so dog. <laughs> they, they, did, they put that over heavy on this episode yeah. that is K-Dog now so yeah. yeah he's like kicks the crutches out and he's just hopping around and then Ray gets back up and who's his back up two of the Vianos yep. yeah. Viano 4-5 and La Parca Parca. Yeah. 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 <laughs> which is like insane because like oh I guess they were baby faces earlier right like Wrath and Mortis yeah. were like yeah. they're supposed to be heels right yeah. so that makes sense yeah it does uh, just I just love that the two villains is there. Here's yeah, here's all the luchadors defending Rey Mysterio and they hate Conan. Yeah, I, I didn't I, I didn't honestly write much down for this segment. <laughs> like, Michael Wall Street? No, oh no, for the Rey Mysterio. Oh, okay, yeah, I got yeah. plenty for, okay. for Wall Street. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> yep. <laughs> so okay, this now like I've been talking about this since the beginning. So now like you know it's 1997. Like the difference between like Nitro and like Raw, like Nitro. M. Wall Street comes out. It's if you're a wrestling fan, you're like, oh, that's IRS. Yeah. His name's M. Wall Street. He's just a dude with a mullet, sunglasses, an NWO t shirt, black cargo pants, and high tech. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's not for NWO. Uh, no, he's not for WCW. It wasn't even. Oh, no, yeah, it was yeah, just it was a, a WCW with, with a, the, a cross the, through the it. The Ghostbusters, the like, red. smoking logo. Yes. Looking thing, yeah. It wasn't even NWO. Like, he was why, his own man. And it's like, why is his name Wall Street besides the fact people know he used to be IRS in the Because WWF. now he's not, he's not, he's not a, a tax man. Now he's working, the, he's work, he's playing the game. Yeah. 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 He's when, taking his knowledge. Yeah, when you wear cargoes like that, you're, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I, this is like, like. And I didn't. They'd, they'd been building Kurt Henning up the whole episode. Yeah. They're, and I, was he supposed to be a babyface or a heel? I get very. I got very confused well, here. I, I'm pretty sure he was supposed to. He was pretty gray area because he okay. did. He did fuck something up, right? Like he, like he jumped DDP or something. I th- well, I think that they kind of like, without directly saying it, said that he was supposed to be the fifth horseman or yeah, the fourth, fourth horseman. horseman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, they were kind of toeing the line. Yeah. Too. So. So they they have like a super short match. 
quick perfect plex, basically. Yeah. yeah. Two moves and a perfect plex. But DDP yeah. runs like on ex- like a whole football field through the fans. Like you see him coming when the match starts. He's yeah. like at the well, top. He's also he like he's super over. Oh, like it's oh, ridiculous. Because yeah. like yeah. like it's almost that thing where like there's like a fight in the crowd. Everybody stands yeah. up and looks like oh no. It's I just, feel like that was just, the cue to go home. It's just DDP. Yeah, it's just DDP coming down the yeah. crowd. He's everyone's so everyone's when losing hear, their minds. I think it was like when you hear the crowd going nuts, like go home. Yeah, because I mean they're doing spots, they're doing something. Yeah, they right kind of just did some basic. He just stuff. grabs them, perfect plex over. Yeah, and then. Like, oh, here he comes. The and then, like, DD, uh, they, yeah, cause I think they got into it. And then, like, he, he, like, ripped DDP's shirt off and he's, he's still sporting your favorite gimmick. What, the fucking the, taped ribs. Oh, yeah. I, I just put that there. I was, and this is like caps, it says gimmicked ribs. Yeah. Uh, I love that little star tattoo. Oh, it's great. On his chest, yeah. right? And he has, yeah. like, in the weirdest it's spot. So like, weird. Kind of on a shoulder, in, in between the shoulder and peck. That's he has a little like star. the perfect, like, drunk tattoo. Yeah. Like, guaranteed. And he constantly looks like he has sun cancer. Yeah, like, yeah. weird skin There's weird, spots. like, blotchy weirdness and, like. Yeah. Yeah. And, but, like, basically him and Kurt Henning start going at it to, like, an eruption. Like, I want to watch like, that match. They had to have had a match, like a pay-per-view match you're at right. some point. That's now. a good point. And I'd then love he, to watch he that hits match. the diamond cutter and people, the Yo, roof blows off the place. Of course, yeah. Perfect takes it great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Looks insane. Yeah, it's so cool. Yep. Yeah. Once you, security hops in. Oh, Doug Dillinger's Doug in. Doug Dillinger's <laughs> the boys. Yeah. You can tell Doug Dillinger's Johnny on the in spot. Hit his crew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I put next. They played one of those like weird NWO commercials oh, for a Dennis Rodman t-shirt. A, oh, yeah. I have a I have a I have a, 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 a note about it. <laughs> is that Hogan on shirt has a skull and tribal tat? Wait, on the shirt on Hogan's shirt that they're selling. Yeah, he has a like a skull and like tribal tat on his arm. Yeah, <laughs> but then Hogan in real life has neither. <laughs> Still that. to this day, he doesn't have those. No. The fuck it, like those commercials are. I mean, it literally. I think the commercials like ten seconds. They're, they're awesome. so fast. I love them. They're so weird. And then like Rodman like closes it with like a weird closing line, out of something like with this shirt. Now I'm gonna kick ass or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, hey, Hogan said at the beginning of the episode, the NWO wasn't the NWO until K Dog and Rodman <laughs> fortified it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> they took it to the next. They needed level. those two extra ingredients, and that was. <laughs> It's what it was, a basketball player? And K-Dog. And, K-Dog. Yeah, K-Dog. A Puerto Rican man that wrestles in Mexico. <laughs> but bullies all the Mexican wrestlers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the main, the main event was next, right? Uh, my first note is I severely bummed Nash doesn't come out with those plaid shorts on. <laughs> uh, second yeah. note is this. There were five, I counted five air guitar uh parts in this entire match like bagwell air guitared hogan air guitared yeah. really oh, yeah. yeah um someone else air guitared uh coming down um and then hall starts air guitaring on the way to the ring really and there was one other air guitar man they're just all stealing hogan stuff so cool dude it's it's hall and nash it's all nwo guys right? well, yeah it was flair and benoit Did, who came to the ring with hall and nash i thought it was just six Oh yeah, it was just six. it was okay. Yep. But there's like yeah. run-ins and shit. Yeah, uh, match is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, dude, I, I said that right here. I said this is like one of the best tag matches I've seen on Nitro yet. Like, actually on Nitro. Yeah, you know, from us doing these shows. And it's so like it's just it always still blows my mind because like you know, you hear all this shit about like how Hall was like such a drunk and a drug addict, and it's just like I think this is before uh, this is I think ninety eight. Yeah, m- middle of ninety eight is when he started going way down. Okay, ninety nine he is shocked. Oh, he's gone. Okay, because. Yeah. He's, Still looks good in this. Yeah. And he fucking dude, dude wrestles that, awesome. Yeah, I it's love, just like dude, like him and Benoit do some stuff together. It's like fuck. I love that Flair comes out and immediately tells him to suck it. Did he? Yeah. yeah. As soon as he comes out, he goes, yeah. suck it. Right on, the, yeah. right on the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he tells him to suck it. Straight, straight. Up. So cool. And then this is with a Pee Wee thing. Uh this is Pee Wee Anderson though. Pee Wee just running around right when they're about to tie up, he's just running around like a crazy person <clears> when it starts. Like they start like be, this is before they even circle. Like yeah. the bell's about to ring. They they're just walking at each other and he's just running around the <laughs> ring. Like getting every point of view he possibly can to get like and, I mean he's a spaz in this yeah, match. It's crazy. Pee Wee was Pee Wee and Mark Curtis might be the two best yeah. of all time. And then there was that like weird like 
sloppy Italian looking guy that refed a couple matches. Oh, like Scott our, Young. Is that what his name yeah. is? Oh, yeah. really? He yeah. looks like like a crooked greeter at like an Italian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, he doesn't just doesn't know what it look like he knows uh, what he's doing. I'm uh, I'm fast forwarding here, but like at so the finish was great. Uh, well, I got something for the one in the middle. Let's talk okay. about that. In the middle, one of the I don't remember who, it, but one of the announcers says, talking about Nash, one of the strongest men ever in the sport. Yeah, they yeah. keep putting it over. I've never heard that before until this match. <laughs> Just because he's big. He's one much. of the biggest guys. Yeah, but I never heard one of the strongest guys. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, they come hand in hand. He's one of the lords of iron. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on a cross. <laughs> Um, yeah, the match was fucking. Yeah, awesome. I just put that was a good match. I, I thought that all of Nash's stuff was awesome in that yeah. match too. Like, because they were he was just they were just putting heat on Flair, and obviously like watching Flair's like selling. There's like a section where like um, he's up on Hall's shoulder, like fireman carry style, like over one shoulder, mm-hmm. and he's starting to take him to this one corner, and you can tell Flair's like take me to the other corner because. There was no place for him to sell. Yeah. So he had to take him back to the other one. So they change, like, directions. And he, like, kind of Oh, that's when he gives him the, the roll of the dice. Yeah. He throws yeah. him in. Yeah. But he buckle. was going to do it on the one. Yeah. But the only place that he could go to sell... Was probably towards... Was towards the... the it, it was just genius shit. Yeah. Like, if you watch that match, like, during the heat section, when they're, like, beating up Flair, you can just tell how good... Ric Flair is. Yeah, with timing and placement. Yeah. And, yeah they, uh, Scott Hall's timing and placement, not very good on the hot tag. Because yeah. he is just in that corner, and Benoit just comes out and has to just start throwing punches, but he has no room. Yeah. It's really weird. Benoit's hot tag was, like, sweet, though. Oh, it was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was just, a suplex. Just, yeah. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> just snap suplex. Yeah, us. Right away. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, and I thought, like, I think Nash always gets criticized for, like, his work. Yeah. As, like, being too slow. Yeah. It was fucking awesome in this match. Oh, I thought he was great. The big boots he hits like on the finish, was unreal, just it's worked so on. stiff, sweet, yeah. unreal, yeah. fucking yeah. great. Because it was yeah. he picked up Benoit for the power bomb, but Benoit like punched his way down. And he, dude, the bump was great on that because it looked organically like he fell. They just crumbled. Yeah, right. on it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and he big booted the shit out of him for the yeah. finish. Yeah, but that, so six on the outside hooked Flair. In a chicken wing? Yeah. And that was like his finisher. It was called the buzz kill. Yeah. Yep. I don't remember that. Really? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you were in WCW at the Is time, this, man. <laughs> like, so six was like a cruiserweight? He had like a, a chicken wing finisher? Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> That's sweet. And then who? someone ran down. Mongo saves the Oh, fire. yeah. Yeah. Big Mongo running. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. But then um, the, uh, the Steiners come out. They look awesome. Yeah. Like, it's, 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 Scott's <laughs> goatee. Oh yeah, it could died. not be any more just for men. Super, awesome. super. I'll say super small, so super black. black, just like his hair. Um, they, uh, they it's just so like because before they even showed the Steiners, you just hear the whole crowd doing like the dog bark. Yeah, it's like man, it's so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fucking cool. Yeah, that, that that was like the cool thing about Nitro. Their crowds were just so hot. Yeah, the crowds were just. And I feel so like it, it just it transferred over. I think that all started in ECW. I think like. The ECW crowds getting being so rambunctious. Yeah. Then crossed over like those fans came to the bigger shows. Yeah. And like it just turned into a thing. Or the fans went to them and saw like, oh, this is how a wrestling show should be. Could be. And yeah. then they went fucking ape shit. And that because I remember like, and then when it transferred to like WWF for Raw and stuff, that's um like they were encouraging people to bring signs. Yeah. Like they used to like there used to be a thing at the beginning of the show. They were like, "All right, put your signs up," and like yeah. they wanted that. They were they like yeah. You say I think it starts from ECW, and then like, yeah, they tried to pick up on it. It was awesome. I, that that I that was like one of my favorite nitros that we've covered. That was great. I thought that was a good nitro. It had yeah. everything that we could want. Funny. There was funny shit in it, and there was like good wrestling. Wrath. Wrath is always going to get me going. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm so bummed that I have to say, like, the Hollywood Hogan stuff was, like, the worst part. Oh, yeah. (laughs) It was not not cool. Yeah, it was not good. I mean, if if you took him out, perfect episode. Oh, yeah. yeah, But a great episode. You could put put more El Dandy in there. (laughs) And I would have been real happy. We got to wait until 1998 for that, though. Highlight of the show. No Jim Duggan. <laughs> yeah, he's gone. <laughs> Sorry, he's I, gone. Sorry, Sorry, Pop. Pop. He gone I gotta up? say this though: the uh, Marty Jannetty makes his debut. The match that I watched, that '98 match last night, uh, Marty Jannetty makes his like debut in it and just kicks the shit out of a dude. In this, I can't remember who he wrestled, but he kicks the shit out of this dude. Yeah. This match, I can't remember what he was finishing with at the time, but like was it the rocker dropper? No, huh. I can't remember. But there was <laughs> the a fist, lot of like stuff. 
No. And then there was uh he takes a move that like you could tell kind of like dazed him because it was just weird after it. And then but he used the Hollywood Blondes theme song. Oh, really? Oh, really? Dan, 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 yeah. dan, dan, From Mario Gennetti? That's great. Yeah. He uses that. But, like, the match is awesome. The super kick, kick is stiff as hell. Yeah. I don't know. i got to watch Your it brother, again. brother can throw a super kick. It was awesome. Probably still can. But, oh, I guarantee you. Yeah. All right. Good, good episode, guys. We got a. Uh, there's a few trivia questions lurking here. Oh, All right. <laughs> you, you guys that. want a shot at like, redemption? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't know. You need a shot exactly. at redemption. <laughs> well, we're doing okay. I mean, yeah. We're about a thousand right now. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna go Mongo here. Oh boy. So I, I know how. I know how excited you are to answer <laughs> yes, this question. Yes. All right. So Mongo in 1997, at consecutive pay per views, wrestled two other professional football players. Kevin Green. Damn it. Kevin, yeah, so okay. Kevin Green. Uh, it was uh, the Reverend Reggie White. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. We'll give you guys a split there. <laughs> Andy's going to probably get this one. Um, okay. <coughs> Wrath obviously started in WWF as Adam Bomb. Yep. Who was his manager when he started? Raven, Scotty Polo. Yeah. Pop. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's a tiebreaker. We'll give you guys one apiece and a split. <coughs> Going back to Raven. Started as Scotty Flamingo in WCW. Uh-huh. Who was his manager? Oh, I know this. It was uh, Johnny Valentine. Or Johnny Valentine? It wasn't? I thought it was. I know you know it. Scotty Flamingo was managed by... Oh, Paul Heyman. No. No. Man, um, I'm already I'm already gone. Was it... We just saw him on a Saturday night. Like that Saturday night we watched. Um... Shit, I got nothing. First name was initials. Um, uh, Colonel uh, Colonel Buddy Lee Parker. <laughs> <laughs> Car- Colonel Robert Parker. <laughs> First name was initials. Ah, Je- oh, damn it. P N News. <laughs> <laughs> damn it. I got I got nothing. Uh, e L Dandy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Who was it? Yeah, for the tie, nothing, no guesses. No. Like that was I. My guy gave you like ten. Yeah. Uh, I'll, all right, I'll give you hints. Okay. okay. Let's, let's get this. Let's break this tie. Uh, his big feud in WCW was against Van Hammer. Um. <laughs> damn. Came out playing a guitar. Um, oh shit! Um, was it Man Mountain Rock? No, like oh, shit. JT. <laughs> JT Lightning? JT the fuck is that guy's name? JT uh Oh my god. This is gonna kill me. Why was that guy his manager? Yes, I know. I I, I know. I don't think I know who that is. Who is it? Oh my god, dude, this is killing me. <laughs> is it gonna end in a tie? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that guy's name? It's JT It is JT. 100%. Oh my god. JT Oh man. A storm? <laughs> JT JT Flynn. <laughs> I wish it was Jerry Flynn. <laughs> I don't know. J it's JT something. JT uh, let's see. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to give you guys something yeah, else. Some way. Um, he, I mean, he retired from professional wrestling to start a successful career in racing vintage and post-vintage motorcycle bikes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. It's going to kill me, dude. JT, oh, my God. I don't think I know it. Oh, I, I don't know. Control. I got half of it right. You do. Yeah, you get what, the uh, JT Southern. Oh, yeah. I, right. I never even heard that before. Really? No, he I got nothing. A mess. He used to come out he with Raven mi- just playing guitar. Yeah. Really? Like just riffing. Yeah. And when did he feud with Van Hammer? It was I mean, he was always that. around for... Was he JT Southern and... Yeah, he's still was, around. In WCW, though. yep. What he still mean? does stuff. Oh, like indie shows yeah. and stuff? Man. I mean, he made his WCW debut on the March 28th edition of The Power Hour. <laughs> versus <laughs> Chris Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> AKA this page has not been created yet on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Gotcha. Yep. He uh, he made hard work of defeating Jobber and mid card wrestlers like Joey Mags and Firebreaker Chip. <laughs> was Joey it Firebreaker Mags Chip? <laughs> yep. Firebreaker Chip was ripped. Really? That dude was big. Yeah, I don't remember he was. At all. He was huge. Yep. Kind of looked like Jim Powers almost. <laughs> I, might, I might be kind of. Yeah, you're a super. Probably. <laughs> he came out a half shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Jacked with a half shirt. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. He looked good. Oh, shit. Firebreaker Chip, build from WCW Special Forces. That's where he's from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great career. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was uh, Monday Night Nitro, 97. 97 of 1997. Yeah. Tuesday, Tuesday Night Nitro. Perfect. Yeah, Tuesday. I mean, yeah. <laughs> unbeknownst to me. Jeez. I like that they never mentioned anything about it. Like, why is it on yeah. Tuesday? Probably. It was just at the, yeah, the very beginning they said that. I'm trying to... I'm, they, Probably the they, Westminster Dog Show, man. They did, they did that once in a while. There was a reason why they would do Tuesdays, and I can't remember what it is. That's Probably cool. silk sock stockings. <laughs> that was USA. Yeah. <laughs> what was the the shitty uh, Jag? What was the shitty show Hogan was on? Uh, oh, Thunder yeah. and Paradise. Yeah. Was maybe that they, maybe they did like the special <laughs> premiere or something? They used to do that once in a while. Like remember, like Sting was in a movie once, and it premiered like after Nitro. Yeah. Yep. Thunder and Paradise like premiered after Nitro. Good Buff, stuff. Buff Bagwell was in a movie once too. Was he? Oh, Buff yeah. Bagwell called Return to Savage Beach. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was just a titty yeah. flick. It was, it was yeah. a Skidamax <laughs> movie. Yeah. Like he would ride a four-wheeler and then bang a chick on her waterfall. <laughs> yes. Puff, Puff Bagwell. Puff Bagwell. Puff Bagwell. <laughs> yeah. Shit, what was the name of it one more time? Return to Savage Beach? Yeah. I always remember hearing yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah it's cool. Um, <laughs> it was real cool. Yo, pu- pu- yo, puffiest man on that card, Mr. Perfect. Oh, he was real puffy. So, like, oh, you dude. could tell he was just, like, yeah. wait, getting towards just, the end. Oh, wait yeah. until you see Giant's fucking, when he Perfect Plex Giant. I saw it. It's, it's un fucking real, man. Yeah, he was the best. It's just weird how perfect it looks. Yeah, it was like well, pretty ironic, but like yeah, there's just like no. It just looks like a, like when you see you're just he like, helps oh. him a little bit. Like yeah. you can tell, giant helps him a little bit, but like from like what is it like nine o'clock all the way over. Yeah. That's all perfect. And right? like, I like I, I didn't even think he'd be able to like hook his like hands and like yeah. he just gives him a totally normal fucking. So perfect. awesome, dude. It's really cool. And it was like, it was almost kind of, I remember like when I watched it, it was like kind of for nothing. Like the match is like short, I think, and he like hits the perfect plex and then like somebody runs in or something. It was just, it was fucking cool. I feel like that was the thing. Like people, when people would like give their finisher to the giant, Yeah. like when Luger would rack him or I think so. Oh, Nash drops him on his head. Nash drops him. Yeah. I love that. Nash is your buddy. (laughs) You bury him on here. It's not burying. No, hey, I mean, yeah, really when you're ha- friends, you just really sass happens. each other. Yeah. Right now, he'd probably look at me and make fun of me. I'm a fucking sloppy mess with a broken shoulder. Yeah. But I think I think Nash did powerbomb him again, and it was, like, perfect. Yeah, he gave him I remember. I feel like I remember seeing Giant take a powerbomb, and it was insane. Yeah. Uh, Luger racked him. Yeah, Goldberg gave him the fucking jackhammer yeah. gimmick. I think La Parca I think him. Scott Steiner did something. What'd you say? <laughs> Nothing. La Parca gave him the Blitzkrieg game the nine ninety. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get Blitzkrieg. If we get a Blitzkrieg on a Nitro on this, I mean, we'll just make sure we get one. What a fucking treat, dude! Yeah, just just Google it. Make Everybody it needs to watch Blitzkrieg. He only had like fucking five matches. He wasn't around very long in WCW. He was fucking awesome. But yeah, if you want to watch something, just how Austin used to do that, like watch this match at the end of the homework. Yeah. You can watch it's Blitzkrieg and Super Dragons like tryout match. Oh yeah. And it was on a Thursday it was on a Thunder. Um two like it was just against two It was a dark guys. match, yeah. But it's on the whole match is on like <coughs> Vimeo like if you just type in Blitzkrieg Super Dragon, yep. the match comes up and like Super Dragon hits it's this bl- fucking gnarly moonsault to the outside, and then Blitzkrieg does some shit no one's ever seen before. <laughs> that dude is an IT guy now. What, what does that mean? He's like a he does like he fixes computers for like a business. Oh really? Yeah, that's huh. great. Was he was he a luchador? No, he's just a California dude. Oh, okay. Like he came up with like Super Dragon and all those dudes. Yeah, Super yeah, Dragon, yeah. Excalibur. I remember hearing him. Okay, I do remember hearing him. I'll tell you what, man. If PWG wants to do it smart, get that dude back just for one match. <laughs> yeah. It'd be fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> Ten years later. Like, not was, even, 20 years later. Him and Super Dragon Tag Team. Oh, it'd be so cool, dude. <laughs> uh, yeah. Will you guys do anything else? I don't know. What do you got coming up? Nothing. I'm off this weekend. Uh, we might be in Smash and Sarnia next week. 
Yep. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Some like jabroni. I'll talk shit. I don't care. <laughs> some like sloppy fat jabroni <laughs> comes and grabs me at the Sarnia show last time he played. He's like, um, hey, do you want to do our? Someone told me he goes. Someone told me to come grab you to do like in ring pictures with fans. Uh, do you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure. So this like jabroni stands on the outside, and I'm just. You know, he's like letting people in and I'm taking pictures of people or whatever like that. And the whole time he's like there and I don't know, he got like, he took a picture with me. I remember he took a picture of me and his like girlfriend took a picture with me. But anyways, he made some like slanderous like account talking shit about Seb from Smash and stuff like that. And yeah. Like saying like le- legit, like said that like Seb bullies people. Yeah, really, which is just like like the, the poor production, which is totally yeah, off. <laughs> like like far from like like Seb bullying someone is like yes. that that <laughs> was like, and like I mean the production that's, that's one is obviously like, outlandish. Yeah, yeah. I mean the other ones are just like you you. It's I feel like if you're a promoter, you're automatically gonna get fired on by people just because. Yeah. It's just the way it is. You don't like, somebody; they're not going to be happy. Of course, whatever. right? And you're you're ta- you're 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 taking on a really shitty situation when you're like, I'm the promoter of this show, and Seb is the promoter of the show, yeah. and it's like he has done only good things for me and my friends. Huh? He's only done good things for anyone that's done anything for Smash. Yeah. I've never heard a bad thing about him yeah. ever. Like, you know what I mean? Like. And this guy he's, he's came definitely up. Like, the, the farthest thing he is is a mean person. No. I, I mean, I remember like one time me, me, Jesse, someone else, and MVP showed up at a show late. And like, remember we got like, he, he was talking about us like yeah. showing up. And it literally was just like, oh, I would have liked to have more time, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like him kind of yelling at us. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? It was like. And he didn't like drag it out for two weeks or anything. But it was bullying? Just like, that was like, it was like, oh my God. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. Basically, what had happened was I guess this guy was like, he bought the show in Sarnia and, you know, Seb would bring the wrestling to him and the guy didn't have money. Yeah. I think that pay. happened a couple times. Yeah. So, whatever. I'll slander the dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you listen to this podcast. You got an open hand slap coming. <laughs> It's, it's just the pills talking. That's all it is, man. <laughs> Andy's still high. I'm shit. I got my fucking. I got my American Top Team shorts on. Yeah, I'm ready to rip. I'm ready to fucking shoot, brother. I love it. You want a fucking bad mouth smash? You're getting shot on. Yeah. One arm. One, One arm, arm, Andy. My yeah. bad arm. A good arm. That's it. I'll fucking pull this thing out. I'll blow my fucking tendon, slap in your face. <laughs> I don't give a shit. So, yeah. So give us the update, man. One week post surgery. Uh, what's good? What's bad? Like I've jerked off twice with my left with hand. With your shitty left with hand? A flashlight or no flashlight? No flashlight. I wanted to go bare hand, <laughs> give it a natural feel at first. <laughs> see how it was. The muscles. Feel. Yeah, it's dude. It's off, man. That you know the <laughs> the timing is a little weird yeah, on it. Totally, it's a little more rigid. Uh-huh. It's not as fluid as <laughs> the right hand. Uh-huh. Me and the right hand have had a relationship, a good, pretty good relationship for a long now. time. <laughs> For probably about 35 years. <laughs> for, yeah, for those of you trying to post up at home with one arm, yeah. good luck. Yeah. 30, let's say 232 years. I probably started drinking off when I was like eight or yeah. nine. Yeah. Yeah. I started like discovering that my dick got hard and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, this morning I got a good I got a good tug in. Last night I got a good tug in. With the left. And I went lefty on it because I can't go righty. The thing is just miserably. So sling on or sling off? Um. The first time was sling on, but I made sure that my shirt was off and I undid the belt. <laughs> my shirt was off. <laughs> I, I, I undid like <laughs> I, I undid I, I undid the middle part so that the, everything was kind of out of the way. Uh, uh, I'm actually crying right now. <laughs> I did the middle part. I mean, what's, can't we, I what, can't. What, what does the shirt have to do with it? <laughs> well, I mean, the thing, I mean, obviously, like, there's some mess that happens. I wasn't about to, I'm like, when you're in this, I'm not going to keep taking this thing on and off, you know? So what it was I mean? like a button down shirt? No, no, I just, it was a, it was oh, a, just it was a it tank a top. Bit. I just I took the you. tank top yeah. off. Yeah. And then, uh, and then today I was, it was like, it was, it was pre, um, it was pre shower. So yeah. I took the whole gimmick off, <laughs> made sure I was secure in the bed to romance myself. <laughs> make sure <laughs> secure. Make sure that you're safe. Yeah. yeah. Romance myself. He ratchet strapped himself to nice. the bed so he wouldn't fall off. Yeah. And then, uh, 
this what did I jack to this morning? I I <laughs> was nitro like girls. No, it wasn't a nitro girl. Um <laughs> It was some sort of compilation. I tried to make it as like, because I don't know how long it's going to last because the rhythm's all different. Yeah. So I had to go, I had to do like a 15 minute compilation just in case. Yeah. You needed some time. Yeah. In case you get, things can't slow down. And I think it was like some sort of like facial compilation <laughs> like that. Just like random fucking and jizzing and then <laughs> for like 15 minutes so that I could get like, I could establish a nice... A nice worked in boner. A nice flow. <laughs> yeah. So that if whatever touches it, it's just ready to rock. You know what oh, I mean? Man. I, yeah. I, I told you like <laughs> this is nowhere near that. Like but a couple weeks ago I was like pretty under the weather and I was yeah. like nighttime, I took some fucking NyQuil, I flashlighted myself, I slept so good. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know so that was the thing, like Hannah brought it up. She she was like so Hannah was in town, she had like a layover. So she's in Buffalo for like 15 hours maybe she got in at like 10 or 11 a.m and then had to leave like then the next morning at like 8 8 a.m or something so we're like up we're getting ready for dinner and we're like in my room and she goes holy shit i never even thought like this is like the perfect opportunity for you to use a flashlight like you can just use the flashlight now like to jerk off and yeah. i was like <laughs> yeah but like even that is like a, it's a whole ordeal like i have to like lube the thing yeah, up there's like, yeah there's like moving parts i gotta clean it out i gotta do all that stuff like you can't just like drop it off so i was side. like i can't just i just was like i gotta go natural i gotta figure it out with my hand first before <laughs> i go to technology <laughs> you, don't wanna, you know you don't want you don't want to run before you learn to walk yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Sure. But anyway, so, I mean, how's it feel? Yeah. I really feel like that was it. That's really the only thing. <laughs> that's the main concern. Is it, uh, is it, we- like, is it no, weird? It's just really uncomfortable. Like, that's it. The pain is gone. Like, can you let, can you like, let your arm pain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, you can, like, take that off and like, just arm just chill? Yeah. Not with my shoulder, but I can just, I can, like. At least move your I base, elbow a little bit. I have to do this little gimmick. So, yeah. I have to go hand. Well, this hand will never go straight because of my dead finger, my yeah. broken finger. But it goes straight. You make an L, you go all the way down like this, like so you're like that. Okay. Go up to here, and then make a full thing, and you're supposed to do that with your hand. Oh, okay. Do that a couple hundred times a day. Just yeah. To just keep your, like, My hand. Flexor, your flexors and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then when I, this is off, I just straighten <coughs> my elbow a little bit. And the, the crazy thing is, like, the first time it happened, like, my fucking tricep just went and just balled right up. Like, it was, like, it was wild. Like, yeah. cramps? Just Hadn't tightened moved, right up. Right. Yeah. Oof. Um. But it's getting better. Like, every time I take it off, that doesn't happen. And then, uh, like, today, I'm having a really hard time, like, cleaning under that arm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm in the shower, like, cleaning my armpit out. Like, I'm being super ginger. Yeah. And then today, I real I remembered that, like, the tomorrow I go see the surgeon. The surgeon's going to do, just to see where the, the uh, range of motion is, he's going to have me do, like, bent over, like, dead hang. And then I go left to right. Okay. And then go around in circles to the right, mm-hmm. around in circles to the left, you know, like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember that. And I was like, it's tomorrow. So in the shower, I just kind of like dead hung yeah. my arm out yeah, yeah. and then like washed under my arm or whatever like that. Yeah. And it didn't really bother me. It was okay. So we'll see. Yeah. Tomorrow is going to be like a big. I forgot your checkup was tomorrow. Yeah. So that, that'll be a big, uh, it'll be a big thing. So um, to see where I'm at would be pretty nice to to talk to the surgeon and yeah, see, what, see, see what's up. Yeah. Cause like I said, like, like this is completely different than I thought it was going to be like there. They actually reattached the tendon instead of doing this like mesh, like blanket that was supposed to be over the entire area. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the one thing that's kind of crazy, and I don't know if this happens to you guys. And if this happens to anyone at home, you know, we talk on Twitter a lot. So like tweet or whatever, but, like, do you ever get those, like, yawns in the morning where your whole body just freezes up? Yeah. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Like, cramp. Yeah, you kind of get the chills or whatever mm-hmm. like that. And, like, you're, like, in yawn, but then your body just kind of, like, yeah, like your, freaks your, out. like your feet and, like, your calves and stuff. Just everything. My yeah. whole body just kind of, like, tenses up. Mm-hmm. Dude, it feels like my shoulder's going to rip out Oof. when I do that shit. Because yeah. I'm, I'm contracting the muscle. Sure. It's contracting in my delt. And it's wild, man. Yeah. That was pretty weird. Yeah. Like, Hana noticed it. Like, I was when we were in bed or whatever and like I like 
did that and I like froze up and, and I mentioned it to her I was like does that ever happen to you and she was like no but I noticed when it happened to you <laughs> and it was pretty, insane pretty scary <laughs> like every muscle just like tenses up yeah, yeah my yeah. jaw and I think that's and I think it's just because my mu- my body's probably in like safety mode so like these yeah because there's like a foreign object probably aren't contracting you know what I mean so when they do contract it's like oh shit yeah they think something's gonna break yeah. or something's wrong that makes sense yeah but I'm doing that like cool thing like um, like Scotty O'Shea at that Albion show, he like tweaked his knee a little bit and his knee swole up. Yeah, he said he didn't even come to London. No, right? he didn't even work the next this day. weekend. So I told him this morning, I was like, "Hey man, the swelling's completely down in my shoulder from surgery." Yeah, and I think it's because of this. And I told him that like turmeric. Uh-huh. If you guys have inflammation in any joint or anywhere in your body, uh, turmeric. Coconut oil, glucosamine MSM, uh, collagen, and hyaluronic acid. You take all that stuff as a cocktail, you won't get inflammation in your joints. Like, it's just, your joints will be fluid as fuck. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing that since day one, and my, like, the swelling's down. I'm icing the shit out of it, so. Yeah, I think the ice helps a lot, too. Yeah. Um, you The turmeric, do you do... Uh, would you use like a powder? I have a powder, but I just take pills. I just yeah. take three pills. I know have pills too. Yeah. Um, that's what I try. I try to tell Scotty like when he hurt his knee on Saturday, I was like, dude, I was like, I feel like a lot of people get lazy with icing. Yeah. I was like, dude, like seriously, just ice your knee for like ten minutes tonight before yeah. you go to bed. It'll make a big difference. Yeah. He might have, but I mean, you know, if his knee was hurt, his knee was hurt. Yeah. I guess it, I guess it swelled up pretty good, and he was having trouble walking. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see it. Blackwood dove onto him. I guess. I guess the video. It's it's pretty ugly the way he, la- oh, really? way he lands on his knee. Yeah. Oof. So it sucks. Yeah. Get uh, well, heck your hacker Scotty O'Shea. Yeah, please. Uh, we saw Avengers. Yeah, I mean, that's like fuck. We could go for another forty-five yeah. on that one. Wes claims he won't ever see it. But <laughs> that's, it's that's, probably that's the truth. Yeah, it's probably the, one. Wes owns his own business. And uh, doesn't have three hours to go to the movies. Yeah. His time, his time is very. It, it's it's around three to like. He probably has to go to bed. You're up early, huh? Yeah, I mean, I'm going from six to six every night. Yeah, yeah, that's a day. And then trying to answer emails and phone calls. Yeah, and... that shit is. But yeah, it just I don't know, man. Like comic book movies just lost me. I mean, yeah. I grew I grew up on a, a, yeah. the corner of Haley's Comics. Great yeah, there was comics, a, a comic book store on the corner mm-hmm. of our street. I mean, so that was. You know, huge part of my childhood, but I don't know. It's just like, like when they just started remaking the movies that they made three years ago because yeah. they didn't do them the right way. Yeah, like it kind of just lost me. Yeah, a bit, you know what I mean. It's just tough, tough, tough for me to follow. Yeah, so. as I think as soon as like Marvel Studios happened, then that just stopped. Yeah, they kind of like said they right, got it. And like it right. we need to like do this like this. We need to have like these stories down and yeah. like the last like. I think everything from like Captain America on has just been pretty good, just awesome. Yeah. And that Avengers movie is just like no spoilers. It's a great movie, man. It's dude. Like, it, it might be one of the. It, it's definitely one of the best I've ever seen. Yeah, and it's by far it, that probably is the funnest I've ever had in I, the movie theater. So Jesse and I, Jesse, me, Jesse, and Laura were supposed to do the Josta podcast when we were in L.A. and it was going to be um, basically. Um, like we do the nitros or we do like the movie, uh, based one where it was supposed to be based on Freddy versus Jason Yeah, and we had to like watch it. I made a bunch of notes and it just turned out that we just didn't have enough time to, to meet up with, J- with J- uh, Jamie, Jamie, the Avengers is a lot like that movie. Like when, when the Freddy scenes are on, it's a, it's straight up a, a nightmare on Elm street movie. Yep. When the Jason parts are on, it's just straight up a yeah. Friday the 13th movie. Like, yeah. This movie, like this Avengers said, when, movie, when like Guardians of the Galaxy, are there? It just turns into Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. It's like insane. Man. And then once they all start meeting up, it just turns into like its own it's thing. Movie. It's so cool, man. Yeah, it's very, it's very well done. Like that, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of work, especially to make a lot of people happy and just do it the right way to combine all those different movies and all those different characters. Yeah, it's got to be rough. They like this isn't no spoilers because this is actually. I mean, this is talking about the first Avengers movie and the second. Yeah. Like to what Wes just said, it was like one of the things that made me happy, and like I caught it in this one too. It was just like 
Because though, like, straight, dude, straight up, those first two Hulk movies were fucking terrible. Ta- just terrible. Terrible. It, well, I, mean, I, like, I have they, a theory it's, about it's, that. It's, it's just, they, like, they do Hulk right in all of these. It's like it's so fucking cool. Well, I see. think that's what it is. It's just like okay, I let's, feel like I feel like they know that those just, movies were terrible, and let's they, like, establish this Hulk. Yeah, and get him over in all these movies to spe- make people want a Hulk movie. Yeah, especially the first one. They did yeah. a really good job with it. They do it in this yeah. one, like they did it. Like, they really make Hulk like a special entity because I yeah. feel like they know those movies sucked. Of course. I mean, but even th- that said, like the his role in like the new Thor movie is amazing. Oh, my God. He's just the, he's just Hulk. Yeah. There's no Bruce Banner. Yeah. And like I th- really think it's like let's just take this character, throw it down their throats to where then when the movie comes out, yeah. it's just right. I did, I'd, I'd love to see a fucking Mark yeah. Ruffalo fucking yeah. Hulk movie. Holy he's shit. perfect, man. Yeah, he's great. He's and I, perfect. Like, I do, it's like, I'm just not like a big Mark here, but like, dude, Batista is so fucking funny. You're in a that. Mark. <laughs> I don't care. It's, dude, I la- like I laugh he's out loud awesome, every man. time. Yeah. He's so good, man. He's really good. It's fucking, it's almost like stupid. I just watched the second Gardens of Galaxy the other day. Too, I rewatched it not too long And it though. was just... It, that movie's great. It's dude. It's so like you could. It's just because I actually after I saw the second one in the theater, I went back and watched the first one. Yeah. And I mean, you can just tell the stuff that they figured out for the second one, like oh, this works, yeah. and they went with it. the second one is so fucking good. I think Yondu might be my favorite character. Is that the blue dude? Yeah. He's amazing. In the and second like, one, he's so good. He might be my favorite character in all the Marvel movies. Really? Like, as a movie. Yeah. Just like his character is awesome. Yeah. Man, the whistle and the. I legit girl. cried when he died in, in Guardians <laughs> Galaxy Two. <laughs> I legit cried. Yeah, uh, dude. Uh, in, Infinity Wars is well. We'll probably talk about it on here with spoilers yeah. at some point. We'll give like, it a let's give it a month. Yeah, because I mean, we just finally saw it. Like I, I don't go to the movies a lot. I don't go to the movies twice to see it, something twice. Um, and I'm gonna go again with Laura on Thursday. I'll probably go with you guys. I was gonna say Laura. <laughs> Or she goes, you think any of them want to go? I was like, yeah, I'm sure they, I'm yeah. sure they will. 100%. Puff, Puff has seen it three times already. Yeah. <laughs> Puff says he wants to see it ten times. <laughs> I mean, I saw Jason X ten times. So. Did you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. How and why? I never, I never <laughs> saw it. was the tenth one. Okay, good talk. Good talk. <laughs> Me and Toy just said, hey, man, we're going to see it ten That's times. That's insane. <laughs> so crazy. That was like... Was it you and was it you and like Steve K that caught me going to the first? Yeah, X Men. Yeah, the first X Men by myself, <laughs> with like a shit ton of popcorn. A shit ton of popcorn <laughs> treats. Yeah, yeah, what are you doing here? Smiling, just and... stumbling down the aisle way like like a four year old in Toys R Us. <laughs> Yo, Andy, what's up? I'm like I feel like there like there was like a part of him that was just like fuck, man, I don't want to look at who this might be. <laughs> like, but like also like why were we there together? together. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you got to remember like at this point. <laughs> like cell phones didn't exist. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. You know, like <laughs> yeah, if, if you didn't like, if I didn't come to his house or him, vice versa, like we didn't know what the other was. Yeah, doing. what was going on? So, That's so good. Yeah, man. it was pre, uh, you know, pre-technology. Yeah. <laughs> Which I'm sure 99 percent of the people listening have no idea what life <laughs> don't, is like. Don't remember without, those times without that kind of stuff. But, I was, uh, the first time I saw the Avengers, I turned my phone on on airplane mode, and just. Like, I just was like, I'm not going to even, I don't want to feel this even go off. Oh, yeah. Right. Fuck. Just man. let it go. Yeah. And just watch. And yeah. it was awesome. I don't, I don't know why that just made me think of. Me like, falling asleep the during f- the Avengers yesterday? <laughs> Fell asleep for like 45 minutes? Did you? <laughs> it was not. I've been sleeping in a recliner. I saw a movie in a recliner, so I'm like, oh, I'm in bed. I just thought, like, to think about the, because I got, I got a cell phone very late. Um, I remember I got it right around the time Gangs of New York came out, because I went to go see Gangs of New York. And I turned my cell phone on high and vibrate because I thought that was vibrate, but it fucking went off. It was like that was like high volume and vibrate, yeah, and it cool. went off during the movie. And I felt like a fucking asshole. There was so. a woman that, at uh, Avengers that me and uh, Puff when we, we saw it, a woman like right next to me, her uh-huh. like phone went off, and oh, like cool. everybody's just like, yeah, especially especially in that movie. Yeah, oh, it was an alarm. Her alarm went off. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I was I was extremely late to the game. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I had a cell phone until like 2010. Yes. <laughs> I was like, nah, man, I, I, I'm I, not doing it. <laughs> I thought I waited long. No, yeah, I think I was about five years after you. <laughs> yeah. It's it's getting hot in here, huh? It's pretty bad. It's Sweatbox Studio, man. Yeah. It's it's just going to keep, we're in May now, it's just going to keep getting worse and worse. Yep. It's just cardio, boys. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's like the sauna. Just sweat it out. Uh-huh. My nose is running. It's good stuff. Uh, talk about fucking Kevin Bennett's cardio. What? Where Kevin uh, the other day sent me a squat program. That's like a squat routine that oh, he that did. Oh, basically like cardio. <laughs> and he finished with 135 for 30. 
<laughs> after after heavy squats. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many reps total do you think was in that hole? Oh my god! It was like dude. You did like two twenty five for ten. It was like a whole. <laughs> yeah, there were like. I didn't do much else afterwards. Yeah, like, not even accessory wise. Real, real heavy on the knees and back. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just, just think, man. Like when you're our age, <laughs> you'll remember that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Every day, uh huh. When you try to get up to use the bathroom, yeah, or <laughs> go up the stairs. <laughs> Fuck, man. <laughs> That time I did 647 reps of squats. <laughs> I can't wake up. Heavy ass weight. <laughs> uh, uh, tomorrow, going to do my first gorge walk. Yeah, gorge walk. Yeah. So I have my, my, uh, my, my appointment's at 1110. Uh-huh. So just figure I'll go after that. Yeah. yeah. If you want to go. I mean. Okay. Yeah. It'll be fun. The gorge, for those of you who don't know, if you're not a Western New York resident, yeah. basically it's, uh. The bottom of the Niagara Falls. Yeah. You know, over years and years and years, millions and millions of years, kind of cut out a big ravine type thing. Wasn't there? It's a towards. fault, right? Too. Yeah, it was That's a fault. To do with and that. then the water kind of just ran it. Yeah. Ran it through. So there's like a few hundred steps down yep. into this, you know. And you do like a two mile walk and then there's another 200 stairs. Yeah, they call it the Devil's Hole. 300 stairs. Yeah, nice. it's Devil's Hole. Nice. But it's like, a, I mean, if, if you're legitimately in good shape, it's still a blow up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's it's one of those things where it's, you know, it's a pretty neat walk. So you take shit. your little time. You're by cool water. You see some cool shit. There's I cool rocks. Snake. You're definitely going to see the word <laughs> fuck spray painted on something. Oh, yeah. Catch yeah. a snake. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd skip some rocks, but unfortunately I got a bad chicken. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to happen with the left. You don't know that. I'll skip a rock with the left. Blow, <laughs> blow the other one. Yeah. Next time we do a podcast, I got two surgeries. Double give it. We're, we're yeah. talking for 20 minutes about how he tugged with both of his hands. <laughs> yeah. <things. Yeah. laughs> Fingers. Uh, I like fuck. put, I put a, I somehow put a flashlight on the wall and fuck the wall. <laughs> I put it in between the two like sofa seats. <laughs> just <laughs> fuck the couch. Kick the hole in the wall big enough for my flashlight. Yeah, yeah, just stuck it in there. <laughs> I went in, I mean, it was already weird. So I just went predator. <laughs> yeah, here's the purple predator one. <laughs> it was weird enough. I just went predator on this one. Fuck. Uh, shot a little cock in the wall. <laughs> get it? Get it? Yeah. For all those. Uh, get it? Oh. Cien <laughs> Almas on uh, SmackDown. On SmackDown. Good shit. Um, yeah. So that's that. That's it. Yeah. All right, guys. That was your Nitro thing. You got a little update in the back. Uh, if you guys want. To hang out with me, um, and I guess Hannah, because she'll be on that trip. Jesse's wrestling at House of Hardcore uh, at the beginning of June. Yeah, June first. I'm gonna look up the towns right now. It's Messina, New York. Okay, that's June. I that's, don't remember that's the, the second. Yeah, the I'm first just, is in Canada. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up right now. Yeah. Uh, Are you wrestling as Jacked Tony? <laughs> <laughs> New gimmick. That would be great. Old. Commissioner. Yeah, now. you might as well just get a new, another new name. Yeah, <laughs> go for the third. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Uh, Corey Graves' hair is looking insane oh, right dude, now. He's he's not fucking around. Jesus, what is his gimmick? I don't know. Just look at that hair. But like, if he's not, all right, so like, I'm not shitting on Corey Graves, whatever. I think but, he's awesome, but but like when he's not on SmackDown or Raw, like yeah. say you're like Corey Graves, like I'm gonna go to dinner in a movie, Corey Graves. Is he like a fucking like a pinup dude? You know what I'm saying? I don't like, think so. Just a normal no, guy, like 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 a like a like a punk hardcore dude. punk yeah. hardcore guy. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's probably wearing like an American Top Team pair of shorts. <laughs> you know, a sling, Amer- American Barbell Club. I'm like the most American right now. How bad does that thing stink? I don't know. Yeah, so the other smell, I, didn't you? I I was I peeled an orange. And the orange just just leaked into this hand thing. <laughs> the best thing for I didn't it. notice that. <laughs> <I'm sticky. laughs> My hand did smell the other day from something. From your orange sling. I don't know. Towards the end, we got to sign that thing. I got to do gotta, something. Blow yeah, it up. Yeah. Yeah. Probably keep fire. it honestly because I'll probably need it again. Yeah, put a thunder stick in it. Yeah. <laughs> thunder stick the shit out of that thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever play a thunder stick pack? Uh, not too much. I mean, I've seen him go. Were you off. around when like Mitch put yeah. him in a bowling ball and shit? Terrifying, man. And then they were They're in the awesome. newspaper like six weeks later for recall. Yeah, recalled. Yeah, they, I mean, they, wasn't it like a quarter stick of dynamite? It might have been yeah, more. They, they put like ten times the legal amount 
of whatever the you know the explosive is in a in a bottle rocket in thunder sticks. God, and they, like like we put we put a thunder stick in a bowling ball in my mom's yard. Yeah, and blew it up, yeah. and it legit blew like a three foot dip into the grass. Like, <sighs> Yeah, like just a hole. Like it was it, so they were cool. scary. As, yeah, exactly. Like imagine, I can't even imagine how loud that was. Oh, it was great. Oh, they were so loud. <laughs> but I'll, I'll always tell the story. We played Dirt Fest, and so at this point in time, we were at seventy eight Washington Street. Wes was at thirty three Washington Street. That was great. <clears throat> Wes walks down to my house. My dad goes three a.m. Yeah, 3 a.m., my dad goes, I'm doing merch for you guys. For some reason, he picked that day. It was yeah. like, I'm doing merch for every time I die that day. Yeah. So he did merch for Dirt Fest uh-huh. with Wes. It's like seven-hour drive to, yeah. where was it? Birch Run, Michigan. It was Birch Run, Michigan. Yeah. Just you and his Like man. a little bit outside of Detroit. Um, North, yeah. Yeah. Dad's so, just like, I'm coming. And he's like, I'm coming. Yeah. So he knew I had this, like, cache of thunder sticks in the, in the, cor- in the basement. Yeah. He goes down. He's like, let's get this. It's just me, him, and Wes. Not like the whole band. He wasn't like showing off for the whole band. Yeah. He just lights this thing up, and it just cruises down the street onto someone's porch and explodes on someone's porch at like 3 in the morning. A thunder stick? Yeah, yes. we didn't We didn't shoot it up. We just laid it in the street and lit it. <laughs> and it just shot down the street. Holy <laughs> shot on someone. Fuck, man. And it was my dad. <laughs> yeah. It was his idea. Yeah. It like just shot onto yeah. someone's porch and exploded at 3 in the morning. Yeah, shit, like shit started they, flashing. Like, dude, they, it was bad. You had to peel rocket? out of there. It was a bottle rocket. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my So you had to like peel out of there. Yeah. So the, the gimmick was to just break the stick off and stick them in things and then light oh okay so yeah um, Fuck, i didn't know they were like bottle rockets yes. so bottle more rocket. scary. dude yeah. the crazy part was they had a thunder stick roman candle <sighs> that would like shoot it would shoot out and then explode big time at the end yeah and which... you'd shoot them at people and it would like hurt you like <laughs> well dude you fucking <laughs> kill somebody i've i've been hit oh, yeah. by them oh, yeah. it sucks sure. <sighs> blows like cuts into your body <sighs> yeah so, uh, yeah. I would that, even be just terrified just holding that thing if there was some kind of malfunction yeah. and it blew off yes. close to your hand. Yes. You'd be gone. You'd wind, up, you'd wind up looking like my arms. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it shoots down the street, goes on the thing. We, like, peel out of there. And then at the time, there was, like, this thing going around. Like, like we were, what was that? What corner was that on? That Wilson Farms we stopped at? <laughs> With a hype towel? Yeah. So, like, there's, it like, was, uh, a hype towel. It was, like. Delaware and Tacoma. I yeah, think. I mean, it wasn't like a bad neighborhood, but there's like a bunch of brothers outside, just sitting there with these towels. Yeah, like, and it's like four in the morning, four in the morning just sitting there outside of this like store, and like my dad just decides he's gonna cut it up with these guys and ask him what the do what the towels are. Yeah. and he's like, "Yo, I need a towel." And then like one of the dudes gives him a towel, and then the whole time he's got this like hype towel, so he's like swinging this hype <laughs> towel around because like these black dudes, like he made friends with these black dudes outside of Wilson Farms at yeah. four in the morning, which they probably thought was weird like this like eric clapton looking dude like walks up to him <laughs> starts talking about towels like at first they're like what's this guy fucking like fucking with us yeah for? yeah so yeah and then we yeah we pick up the band we drive to fucking michigan that day keith and jordan's sister graduated high school yeah, so they flew home so they flew home but also we were kicking our bass player out yeah, that curly, day yeah curly went to the airport so like curly after, went to the airport after the show it was just like yeah chris they gonna work out he's like yeah i'm thinking the same thing okay good yeah. see ya <laughs> blah, blah blah like that's literally how chris burns was kicked out of the band or like left the band or whatever you want to say yeah and like everybody leaves then it's just me rap boy Wes and uh, my dad for the rest of the show. My dad makes friends with a band called Coke Dick Motorcycle Awesome. Wish I still had that shirt. He still has really? it somewhere. Oh, yeah, they gave us t-shirts. Like, oh, oh, man, yeah. Great yeah. Like, Check this out. He has to have it somewhere still. Coke Dick Motorcycle Awesome. That was the name of the band. You guys are listening? Send us shirts. Yeah. Frank Williams loves you guys. <laughs> um, there was wrestling on the show. There was we wrestling. paid no attention to it. At yeah. Time. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. There was a there was a wrestling ring like, right in the middle of the parking lot. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if anything else happened that day. Oh, oh yeah. when we were driving home. <laughs> yeah. So at this point, Rap Boy couldn't drive the truck and trailer. Like, yeah, he, he was just, like scared to like, like we we also like flipped the van and trailer. Yeah, I mean like, some stuff happened. I think he was a little weird, right. weirded out by that. So we you know by we, the way we gotta have him on the podcast. If you guys are listening to this, yeah. if we should have Rap Boy on the podcast. Like let us know. Yeah, because yeah, he will and yeah. yeah. So yeah, at this point like. You know, the show happens all day fast. It's probably 8, 9 o'clock by the time everything gets loaded up. Down, yeah. And we're good to go. And we've been up since 3. 
you know, standing in a 95 degree parking lot all day, like <laughs> not eating, not <laughs> eating. Like we had Arby's. That was yeah. yeah. Like, you know, so we're all kind of like, fuck man, who's taking first leg. So I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll do it. I'm good. Dude, 30 seconds down the road, rat boy snoring. Andy's <laughs> next to me, head down. And Frank's in the back sleeping. Right. So oh. I'm like, I'm like, I'll just roll the window down. I'm cool. Yeah. So I fucking roll the window down. I'm like sitting with my head kind of like half out the window just to let the air hit my face. Yeah. And dude, next thing, I think I see a guy riding a bicycle in the middle of the highway. <laughs> yeah, but been, I'm gone. I've, I've been there. You know what I mean? So then I'm like, yeah, fuck. So then once I do that, like he wakes up, uh-huh. Frank wakes up, and they're just like, yo, man, we'll drive. So it got to a point where it was like every 15 minutes, yeah, we, were we were pulling, pulling over, over and switching drivers. Switching. That's, that's not the, and then I woke up, right? Is that that No, that trip? was not. When, okay. No, 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 okay. <laughs> that was but not yeah, that I thought I hit, like yeah. I thought I hit a baseball bat in the street. Oh, like, yeah. it, was, it was really those, bad. Like, yeah, those like delusional drives. Oh, yeah. So yeah. dangerous. I mean, it was crazy. But there was yeah, a point where we were doing like twenty minute shifts. Yeah, like that was like the only thing you could do. <laughs> Just yeah. twenty minutes. Like, trying to get home. Yeah. We, go, we went through Canada too, right? Yeah, it was the only way. Yeah. yeah. How long was the drive like supposed to be? It was probably like five hours. Yeah, so oh, okay. it was like about an hour and a half. I think hour, hour and a half north of Detroit. Yeah. So yeah, everyone's just switching it out every yeah. twenty. I mean, not as bad. A mess. As, not as bad as uh, me and Andy went to Erie one time. Like this was probably twenty years ago. For yeah. A hardcore show. We were gonna stay, but we we didn't. <laughs> We left to come back. It was like two thirty three in the morning, and uh, I f- I had fallen asleep. Yeah, he was driving, and at one point I woke up, and like you know, kind of just did the like, all right, I'm good. Like you know, I wasn't driving, but just like okay. Yeah, and I wasn't sleeping. And I look over, and his head is just <laughs> down. <laughs> like, like he's out, just cold. Yeah, like, so, not, like not even close. Like, to, like like cruise control on like eighty. <laughs> like, I mean. There's just no way of knowing. Like, I don't know how long we were out, both of us. Yeah. <laughs> In a little fucking Geo Metro, which is like yeah, the size yeah. of a smart car. Three right cylinder. <laughs> Holy yeah. fuck. I just looked over and his head was just down like this. <laughs> and I was like, yo, dude, get up. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just, I just, it was just for a second. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, we're fucking, uh, we'll Biff, Bus- Biff Busick or fucking O'Neal Lorkin told me a story. He was driving with somebody, same thing, when it was, like, long, overnight, dangerous-ass drives, and, like, Biff, like, fell asleep in the passenger seat, and he, like, woke up, like, fuck, and he was, like, looked over at the dude to, like, be like, hey, are you okay? Before he could even say anything, that he, he like, as soon as he looked over, the dude was pouring water on his head, and just, like, looking at Biff, like, he just, like, looked like a mental patient. I love that. Because he was, like, trying like, to, like, Why would you dump water on your head in a car? Because so like, cool. he, like, he was so close to, like, going out, yeah, you know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was actually uh, really proud of the brothers. Uh, we got pulled over on the way to Smash on Sunday yeah. by the border guards. And, like, they were, like, try- you know how they, when they, like, they try to fuck with you? Yeah. And, like, Kev, what did they ask you? It was, like, first they pulled over. They're, like, you guys are wrestlers, blah, blah, blah. And then she was, like, she grabbed his T-shirt and she was, like, arrive, remix, and leave? Like, what does that mean? Yeah, she thought, like, I was going to, like, do something to Canada. Like, I was going to remix Canada. Yeah, and Kevin, like, literally takes his hand and he goes, no, I'm the remix. And he, like, shows her his hand. It was awesome. It's always with my merch. Like, the last time before that, like, they uh, were looking through all the merch and just grabbed an 8x10 of me and just didn't even say anything. They just held it, held up. it up and just, like, showed me, like, what it was. They're like, yeah, you know? But that whole so thing of they're just like, like, like Kev was like, these are my shirts, and she's like, oh, you're selling these, and we're just like, yeah, and then like, and then like it was okay, like they just 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 trying to like fuck with us the whole time, and then like Bennett and Blackwood were wearing the podcast t shirts, yeah, and like why are you guys wearing the same shirt, and I was like, oh, that's our podcast. Are you selling these? Like, yeah, I, I got like ten of them on me. And yeah, she was asking me what American Barbell Club was because I had a hoodie and a fanny pack on. Yeah, just 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 trying to fuck with you. Didn't Mark? Didn't uh, Danny call one of them a Mark? No, that wasn't this time. I thought Danny called one of them a Mark. <laughs> Danny called Gangrel a Mark. What? Yeah, Why? there was like a, something going. Like he told a story, or someone was telling a story, and Gangrel like interjected, and he just looked at Gangrel and goes, "Fucking Mark." <laughs> <laughs> It was the best. <laughs> that was Puff said that yesterday because there was that like dollar fifty service charge in yeah. the movie, and I was like, "Why are they?" I guess, I'm like, "Wait, why are they charging a dollar fifty?" He goes, "I don't know. Prices are fucking mark ass mark." <laughs> yeah, <was> so mad. <laughs> Rap boy was like, is like blown away by, by his voice. 
Like he's, he's got he's the voice of like a 40 year old. He's 20 and he sounds like he's 45. Yeah. <laughs> My name's Buff. <laughs> I love him. I, I hear that. Well, yeah, we, are, so we really stretched that let's out. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, thanks, guys. It's Appreciate hard. it. It's hard. Yeah. Hey, listen, we're going to, we're going to, now that we're actually, I'm home for a bit. We don't have to. We can actually do like regular podcasts, not like record a bunch yeah. for a bit. Yeah. Leading up to Warp Tour, we're gonna have to start doing two a days, but yeah, uh, or two a weeks. But for, uh, for we're, now, we're pretty good. We're pretty good. I do want to get this out. Uh, June first, House of Hardcore's in Napanee, Ontario. So yes. Come see us in Napanee. Yeah. You know. I'll be there hanging out, you know, <laughs> you know Napanee. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next day is Messina, New York. Yeah. And then the day after that is in Toronto. Smash. That's Smash Wrestling. And Smash. In Toronto. Yeah, so I'll I'll be at all three of those um, with Jesse, not with Jesse, but I'll be in the crowd just like watching. Um, so yeah, come, come say hello, come watch wrestling with me. And, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna do the closer. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Heats in the ring, guys. Heats Thanks. in the ring, brothers. See you, and sisters. <laughs>